Hey there guys and welcome back. So, uh, today we are going to do a variety of designs. We have, first off, this is one of the little designs I wanted to do that I mentioned a few weeks ago. I got this pack of cutoff wheels for Dremel. Came with some arbors. Just came in a plastic bag like this. Wanted something to actually hold them. So, that's design number one. Then, similarly, these things have just been kicking around my Dremel box, my Dremel case, and unfortunately, it, while it has slots for them to actually sit in, that does not work terribly well. Therefore, we will be designing a holder for those. And finally, the projector that we designed in the last stream, the last minute stream from last week, uh, that worked out well. I just wanted to make some changes having used it now to hopefully get it working better. Chances are we're going to go ahead and work with, uh, do that first, but while we're here on the desktop, I want to go ahead and at least get an idea of where we're going with the rest of these designs. So, uh, no, I have choice paralysis on which marker I feel like using. I'm kind of feeling the light blue. All right. So these discs, um, looking at it, kind of this idea I had that I really wanted to do was I kind of wanted to have these discs stacked up and then have one of these like running through the center and holding everything in place. And then I realized that's absolutely not going to work because this is a, I think it's like a two or three millimeter hole. And the arbor is like definitely larger than that. And actually thinking about it, I'm pretty sure it's not three millimeters. So it's probably two millimeters or smaller, uh, the hole in these discs. So anyway, point being definitely not working. So instead plan is, uh, I believe this is where I'm going with this. We'll see when we get into CAD whether or not it actually works out. So this is going to be a side view first. And like that. So. And then clips like this. Uh, we'll store the cutoff discs in here. And then arbors down here. That's the idea. So the arbors will go clipped into this thing and just in a circle pattern around there. So drawn a bit more 3D. And I don't know why I'm drawing it at an angle like this, but here we are. that and then that and I'm um, uh, one of those things there are I what was it a hundred discs right here uh, how many were in here 54 so 50 because the four count is the four arbors so there's 50 discs in here I'm considering splitting this up that's part of the reason why we're doing this and throwing a second container down here for cutoff discs the top up here I'm thinking is maybe going to be a screw on lid just because those are fun down here. You see, I drew this lip here. I'm in between including that or not, which is why I didn't necessarily draw it down here. There we go. So now it's down here as well. Kind of. Um, the idea with that and similarly, I'd probably do the same thing on the top. But the idea there would just be to help keep these in line. I almost wouldn't want to do it on the top just because that makes it even harder to get these guys out. The reason not to do it on the bottom is that reason, is that it would make it more difficult to get these guys out. So long as the clips work, then it doesn't actually matter. The reason it has a top and bottom is so that they don't slide out. Although, the fact of the matter is, is you will notice that these are larger at the top than at the bottom. So we really only need the uh, top in theory because they're not going to slide out the bottom it's one of those things they'd have to slide through the larger portion right here so bottom technically not necessary but i think i'm going to include it anyway especially if we got to do or in, we need extra storage rather is what i was trying to say there as for this uh this is going to just be a little case where they plug into nothing fancy no need to be anything fancy I'm considering for the collets, I'm considering 
actually having those be spring spring loaded in the exact same way that the uh these guys actually I still have them on my desk. So these mandrel holders over here are spring loaded. And let me see if I can't pop that out really quick. Don't roll away, Pinky. Uh, basically, it is a cone-shaped spring that pinches down towards the center. And let's see. Let's see if I can't get it out to give you a better look. And the idea here, the reason to put these collets into a spring-loaded thing is just because with the larger items, they're heavy enough and they're large enough that if I just put them into a simple little holder, they're probably not going to go anywhere. But with the collets, because they're so light, they can, you know, fly all over the place. But here we are in case you haven't seen these I have it up on Thingiverse in case you want to download, but it is, yeah, I guess the camera's not going to be able to pick that up too well, because, especially because it's black. So I will draw it, which could have done from the beginning. Basically, this is the cross section right here. Uh, goes like that. Uh, there's the lip. Okay, I'm going to just draw this as a cross section as stated. So let me put that line in there. And then it spring loads like this. So it's got this uh, cone that gets cut in half so that it actually can separate. And it comes down at an angle like this. So it's kind of a pyramid shape around a uh, cone shape, really, is what it is. But that is how that works. Uh, we probably will go ahead and do that with these guys just because, again, I feel like they need the holder. These guys entirely unnecessary. They're plenty heavy enough. They're not going anywhere. Plus, uh, because they're big enough, it's easier to make a snug fitting compartment for them. Whereas with these guys, getting these guys into a snug fitting compartment, while possible, it can be a bit finicky because your leeway is so small because the diameter is so small to begin with. So that is the plan. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to check, actually, while we're here, is each of these have different size collet openings to accept different size tools, but I'm under the impression that the body diameter is the same for all of them. But I have yet to confirm that, so let's just take a quick sample to confirm it. Yes, the light on my right-hand side is still uh, being funny. Four and two thirds, or 4.23 rather, not two thirds. That's a big different 4.21 on that one. So yeah, chances are they are all the same exact diameter. This guy's from a different pack, so let's check him really quick. Nope, he's still, he's more like 4.3, but that's close enough. Especially because we'll have some spring in these can, uh, holders. Some flexibility in them. So, uh, for these just to draw out what we're looking at here what i'm thinking is i'm pretty sure i want to do just a box okay maybe with a slide on lid maybe with a slide on lid and then for the actual holding or on the inside rather is what i should say i'm thinking it's one of those things, it's going to depend the shape on how this turns out, but maybe something like this where this top half is divided into three for the three big guys, and then the bottom half has rows of the holders. And again, like I said, this is that right there. So, that's the plan for these two guys, but as previously mentioned before I went on that uh, clarification tangent, I do want to get started first on the project. Oh no, you lost the desktop. The projector. Uh, this should be display two. It is. There we go. Um, the projector, as stated, worked out very well. Very happy with it. Also, just noticed that I had turned the music off to check my volume. 
And now music is back on. Uh, you will notice if you were there for that stream, two different things. Uh, first off, well, actually, uh, you're going to notice a third thing that you can't see it just yet. However, first thing you'll notice is that these are a lot larger. I realized for my smaller phone, again, this projector, the way I was using it, initially, at least the intention was to use it upside down like this. That was the initial intention. It did not work out like that. So uh, that ended up not being a deal. However, when I did set it up upside down just to test it, I noticed that with my smaller phone, it would actually, it could actually slip side to side out past these plates. That's the, the point of these plates is to stop it from sliding too far. So since they were not doing their job, I went ahead and extended them. And then I also noticed that these were originally uh, just, uh, these had no features to them uh, to help prevent them from breaking. So I came back and I filleted that to give it a little, make it a little bit more sturdy. We're actually going to replace that completely. The third thing, the thing that you will likely not notice is back here. I realized the original design with this. Uh, I had taken our 30 millimeters, which was the distance uh, that each of these prongs go. So if you see the cutout here from the end of that to the opposite end of it, that extension is 30 millimeters. I had had, I, oh, excuse me. I had added that after we had set them up and I realized that actually that didn't really work. So I shortened it all up just so that we were using the entire space. Long story short. Basically, the travel did not meet the length that these holes were was the problem because I had added the 30 millimeters on afterwards. So that explains the changes that you did not see. Now we're going to go ahead and make more changes. So first change I would like to do. Um, actually, before we do that. So the changes I want to make one, I want to add ribs to sturdy these guys up because they are quite flexible. The second thing I want to do, which is actually going to be the first thing here because it makes a huge difference is I actually want to change this. So one of these deals, um, these are eight millimeter rods right here. Uh, with the projector one second. Let me grab it. Actually, I just realized uh, you're not going to, I realized you're not going to be able to see it. There's no way I'm going to fit this onto my desk. Um, the projector is quite large. So the eight millimeter rods make sense. However, what's going to happen here is it was very difficult to slide this front piece, even with the extra offset forwards and backwards it really wanted to can't and get caught up on the rods so for that reason i am going to put a slot in here in theory for eight millimeter linear bearings it's one of these things where those are definitely more expensive than just regular old skate bearings and the problem with friction friction really just goes away for any bit of metal you can put in there so at the end of the day what would probably be better is eight millimeter ID bushings rather than bearings. Like bearings would be better. Like just strictly speaking, it would be better. But in theory, I would hope that it would be cheaper at any rate to use bushings. Basically, we just need something other than plastic metal on metal should slide a lot better than metal on plastic. That's what it all comes down to. And furthermore, the length of the linear bearing. It gives it a little bit more rigidity so it doesn't want to camp as much. That is my hope at any rate. So that is the logic there. I'm just going to really quick look up 8mm ID bushing. Just to see what our costs look like. Uh, let's see. Do, 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 do. So we have some. It looks like... 12 millimeter, ugh, can't talk. Uh, we have them in a couple different lengths. Uh, here's some flange bearings. Uh, one of those things, I did this last stream and I really should just start doing it rather than just talking at you. One of those things, I'm not logged into my own Amazon on this user. So the fact of the matter is, is that there's really no problem with me 
showing you the Amazon screen here, which is why I normally avoid it. But since none of my personal information is on there, no big deal. So as you can see, um, we got some really cheap ones, 50 cents a piece, which again, that was my point. My point was that compared to linear bearings, eight millimeter, uh, actually LMU eights, So this is 1237 for 10 pieces. We compare that to, uh, this is 10 pieces? No, this is 12 pieces. 650 for 12 pieces. You can see how that's a bit of a difference right there in cost, which is why I kind of think it'd be better to use bushings. What caught my eye, okay, so this is only four pieces. This is what I was curious about because this actually would be a little bit nicer to use than these longer bearings. Uh, but they are definitely more expensive. How many are here? Three pieces? Yeah. Back to when you get into brass bearings. Brass bearings get expensive, unfortunately. As opposed to these steel bearings. Centered iron bearings, I guess. I wonder if that means that they're 3D printed. Interesting, interesting. All right, well, anyway, that was that. I'm curious, um, 12 OD, 12 OD, 11 OD, because the OD is going to matter. And again, that's why I kind of wanted to use bushings, as I mentioned. Uh, sixes, we don't want sixes. That's 14 OD. 12 OD. So it looks like most of them are 12 OD. So we'll go with 12 OD. The 11 OD ones, I guess you can just use a plastic insert. I mean, a one millimeter plastic insert is kind of obnoxious, but uh, alternatively, the OD on the LM8s, LMU8s, LM8UUs, what are they like they're called? Uh, I forget what those are, but I just know it's bigger. What's outer diameter? 15 millimeter. Uh, that's actually not that much bigger, surprisingly. 15 millimeter. Huh. I am... Whoops, bring that back. I am surprised they're not larger than that. Actually, in that case, you're not saving that much. So the difference between... These should roll better. It's one of those things. They show, should roll better than the bushings. I would hope at any rate, I would hope that they would roll better than the bushings. In which case, if all we're saving is a millimeter and a half on each side, then actually it's fine to use the LM ADUs. So actually, I guess we will design for that. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, but as I was saying, uh, before we put the ribs in to stiffen up these parts, we're going to have to put the bushings in first because they're going to take out space and change the shape. Uh, the third thing, I knew there was a third thing, but I couldn't remember it at first, is these clips. Uh, now, these clips, on every other clip that I've made, if you've watched the stream, you know that I always have those printed separately. Because, for two reasons. One, in case they break, then you can just replace them. And two, I always say they need to print on their side so that the... Uh, so that the bend is perpendicular to the flex, or perpendicular to the layer lines. The flex is perpendicular to the layer lines. And you need to do that because otherwise the layer lines just separate when they bend. And that's exactly what happened. That was the biggest issue when I printed this out and used it. Was that I ended up just hot gluing the stupid magnifying glass to the front here. So... That is the story with that, and now let's get started. Uh, we So anyway, point being, we do have to come back and fix this, but that will be the last thing we do. So, just going to go ahead and turn the lights off so that they're not in my eyeballs, and we can get to designing. So, um, at this point, at this point... We need to come back before we create this stuff, which is like back here-ish. 
That's that, that's that, that's that. We had to do that first to determine. Yeah, all right. So back before here is where we will put the bearings. So roll over here, back up. Uh, the rods, are the rods in place yet? The rods are not in place yet. So actually, I guess we will add them to this. We will design for them here. Uh, let us, now that I know where this is, whoops, come all the way back here. And hop up here, hop up in here. Uh, these should be under downloaded because I did not design these. There they are. And eights, we're looking for eights. Insert. Proceed. Okay, that's fine. And... Okay, yeah, it does not come with parameters, so... L M A U U O D is uh, 15 millimeters. That's what we said. And the length is 20... I think the standard length is 20, if I recall correctly. Uh, I'm trying to get this face right here. There we go. That face to that face. That says 23. Oh, I grabbed the wrong face. 24. All right. It was 24. That sounds correct to me. Although I will believe anything that I convince myself of. So we're just going to claim that. I am right in thinking that length. That is correct. That is the standard length. Okay, now back to where we were before. It's the yellow one, first yellow design. Back up a bit and then hop into the back plate. I'm pretty sure that's the back plate right there. Yes, it is. And now we edit. That's this guy right here. And, 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 and. Uh, let's see. So we were using a set screw to lock it in place, and we still should do that. But what's going to end up changing here is we're going to go ahead and toss that on there, I believe. We're going to close that. You are right here, so I'm going to go ahead and toss another rectangle in here really quick. The fact of the matter is that this one I'm pretty sure is dead. I'm pretty sure we don't need that circle anymore. This is going to change to just 8 millimeters. We're going to change that to 8 millimeters for 8 millimeter rods. I was using the 7 16th because that's technically what the rods I have are, but... Now that we're going to use the LM8UUs, we're going to go ahead and change that to match. This right here, this box that I was adding in, is going to be the offsets for the surround for the nut capture. And that is going to go in front of the LM8UU. We're going to set this to 3 millimeters and 3 millimeters just a wall offset around there and now we need the OD so there's that uh, this three millimeter right here we are going to keep in because the rod the nut capture is going to go in front of it which means that we do need plastic actually yeah yeah so the LM8UU is going to push in from the back side Let's just show this really quick. On the front end right here, which is what we're designing for, the 8mm UU is going to push in from the back side. And the... Let me just... Back side, this way. And then the nut is going to go in front. That is the plan. So. Actually, there's a question about how much we really need 
to cover for the LM8UU. The LM8UU could stick out the back end, be half in the plastic and half outside the plastic, and that shouldn't really be a problem. So we will consider that. And that saves us on printing and plastic, etc, etc, etc. Print time and plastic is what I meant to say. Uh, so there's the 15 millimeters for the outside. And then we need, I guess I'm going to make these. That one actually needs to stay, stay solid. But this one is three millimeters. And this now needs to come up here and be tangent to that. Meanwhile, that does not go far enough out here, so that means that this front line right here is fine to go collinear to. All right, and that should be that. So we are going to step through here because things should be a little wonky. Let's check this. Okay, looks like that is correct so far. That. Uh, that is actually also going to be correct because we didn't delete that circle that it was working off of. So I am fine with that. Uh, these next two, or maybe not these next two. Which one is that? Oh, is that the hole? Huh. What is that creating? Is that a separate body? Join. I don't know what that's creating. Oh, I know what that was creating originally. Okay. Uh, so the flange was sticking out the edge originally. And because the flange was sticking out the edge, I extruded the flange that was outside the edge out. And then this next one. That one, I cut the top edge of the flange off. That's how that worked. So, let us go ahead and delete that. Uh, it should be fine to delete that. I'm going to delete this and this as well, because we no longer need these. Uh, that is the hole all the way through, so that's fine. And the reason we don't need those anymore is because, again, I'm going to put a runner around the edge here uh, to stiffen this up. Uh, struts to stiffen these up, whatever the heck you want to call them. And at that point, it will be unnecessary. Okay. Okay. And I think the rest of this should be fine. I don't think anything else should be damaged by this. So I'm going to go ahead and come in here and toss those. Uh, so I could in theory toss them in here i just this is already messy enough as it is this corner so i don't necessarily want to do that just yet i'm going to go ahead and just create a new sketch project that guy okay and i don't know that it's necessary so let me do a quick check here. Yeah, so that's 12 and a quarter. That's like more than what I was expecting to make for the ridge. I was thinking maybe five or six. Uh, in that case, it may be better to go ahead and put those flays back on the inside. The fact of the matter is with this ridge around the outside, and actually I will just go ahead and use the offset to minus six. With this ridge around the outside, it's probably not necessary because these things are unlikely to break. I did actually break one of them while installing the rods, which is why I'm bringing this up. But it's probably unnecessary. So, uh, this is, I don't think this, yeah, it definitely doesn't go into the hole. So, we shouldn't have a problem with it extruding through uh, these guys. And let's make it just six millimeters thick as well. Join. And you're going the wrong way. There we go. Yeah, so with this extra support around the edges here, I can't really see these guys snapping. Maybe I'm completely wrong about that. And actually, since that doesn't uh, quite 
catch. I guess I should project in the front side instead. So let's go ahead and project the front side. One of those things, I do have overlapping projections at this point, but I'm not particularly going to worry about it. And did that just change my selection? That's kind of funny. So grab the corners. Grab the corners. Join. All right, there we go. So like I said, that should just stiffen this up so it doesn't want to twist as much. Again, the only real problem I had with the uh, version that we created last time, uh, aside from the clips, you know, breaking off when I try to uh, get the... Well, actually, I broke two of them off, two out of three off, just removing supports because they were overhanging. But, point being, one of the few problems I had. All right, so that is correct. That is correct. Uh, actually, I guess I should start here. So, let us open that back up. That's sketch two. Turn the back plate off and we go ahead and 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 that should be my correct size, I believe. I will double check it in just a minute. From object minus uh yeah, so back to how deep do we want it in there? If we stick it half out, we can probably doesn't make a difference so uh lm8 length divided by two okay let me double check the diameters here so that is 14 millimeters we were supposed to be at four, were we supposed to be at 14 no we were at, supposed to be at 15 okay so i was not incorrect about that so which circle do i need to fix here Oh, okay, so that is, I do need to turn that back on, in other words. And let us fix that then, that selection. There we go. Okay, uh, we will go ahead and extrude out the center now to put the hole in. And we do need this guy. All right, cool. From object, that distance all, and cut. And objects to cut, just make sure that we're only on the lens plate, okay. Uh, what went wrong here? You were supposed to be a join. Huh. We are in the lens assembly. Oh, I guess I gotta be in the lens plate. Alright. So, let us hop back out here. Delete that. Yes. Hop into the lens plate. And do that again. That, that, that. From object that minus LM length divided by two. The join is correct. And then take our step. That's fine. We have that selected correctly. From object, we can select that. And double check that we're not cutting anything we don't want to. Okay. Um for these oh no, that's right. Um Yeah, 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 yeah. I will go ahead and, after we get this extruded correctly, uh, I will fix the rest of it. So, do, do, let's see.
Yeah, you are sticking out there. I was trying to figure out because it doesn't look like I can deselect that, which is my problem. Oh, okay, so this is on another sketch. That is why. So we need to reproject out that guy. Okay, I understand. I understand. Uh, let's turn that off and that off because we no longer need it. The bodies can go back on. And finish sketch. Now come back in here and we can fix this. Okay, and now, so that gets us back to where we were and now we need to throw another one in here, which is all of this. From object that minus uh, let's see so hex okay with with so we need that plus six or I guess put these in parens there we go uh, that should be good enough I believe and this should be a join So I'm not entirely sure why it is having such an issue here. Okay, it decided not to have an issue, that's good. And actually, furthermore, I wasn't gonna extrude the other stuff, but fact of the matter is, is that it's really not that much more. So let's go ahead and add it. Something we went weird with the selection there, so I'm just gonna come back in and retry. I guess, okay, so I was under the impression, okay, I guess not, okay, 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 I understand. So, that's this guy? Yes, that's this guy. What I want to do is I just want to straighten that out, so what I'm attempting to do right now is also select this face right here which it doesn't look like it's going to let me so the easiest way is just to do this i'm not going to worry about too much join all right now this guy's going to be a pain because it's not going to be correct distance to object distance from object and we actually want to go to object instead that. And now we want to offset that by three millimeters. So we have the wall on the inside, okay. And then, uh, yeah, we don't need that hole anymore. So that can just be deleted. It deleted and Boink. Let's see, how you doing? Okay, you look fine. Good. Okay, you look fine, but you're not really fine. Uh, what are we missing? Okay, we're missing that. I believe that is what you're looking for. And, whoops, don't do that. And yeah, now we just need to make sure we include everything. Okay, um, we do need to add, it looks like, that hole. Let's see really quick. So this guy. Yes, we do need to add those guys. Okay, okay, okay. 
Okay. And same for this guy. We need to add that, 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 that. Okay. And now we can add that rim back on. Or not back on, but actually add that rim. And I'm going to project this. Uh, actually, let's project the body. That way we get everything. Turn the body off. It does not look like we got everything. Is do, 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 Turn that sketch off. Nope, did not. So, Control-Z. Project, turn this off. That. And... I mean, I want this corner. The corner is what I want. Point being... Did I just get that edge? Looks like I got that edge. Which works for me. Okay. Body. Turn it off. And then... Offset. Uh, that's not offset. That's offset. Uh, actually, I guess we will not be using offset this time because it's not contiguous. Six. All the way around. Okay, and then we extrude. And we want to extrude the corners and the rim. Everything look right, I believe. So, from object, op, minus six. That is joining, that is correct. And we take a quick look. And we did not bump into that hole, so that should be fine. Double check that, that's 15, it is. And at this point, we can go ahead and drag this guy into okay maybe not drag that guy cut paste no paste all right control z whoop control y okay hmm you're not gonna let me in here huh wonder why you hate me why do you hate me? All right, we'll just align that one then and call it a day. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Where's my alignment tool? Oh, there it is. Derp. All right, center of that guy to the center of that guy. Hit OK, capture position, turn this off because why? Y interference double check that nothing's going weird here calculate no interferences and we can hop back in here turn that off just add a little bit of offsets which we should have done back here minus point two I mean we kind of want it to be mm, snug so in theory, I should do 0.05, but we want it to make sure that it's not terrible for us. So minus 0.1, uh, new offset. I wish it would keep my previous offset. That'd be nice. Okay, now we can do this and include that guy and include that guy. Okay, there we go. All right, so we got the rims, we got the LM8Us. Well, we have at least one LM8U at any rate. So, last thing to fix on this one is the clips. Uh, what is your problem? What were you doing before? Oh, you're the rod. That's what you are. Okay. So, uh, from to... 
that guy. Okay. Alright, cool. Cool, 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 cool. One of those things. Um, I didn't really say this out loud, but this thing sticking out the back is not actually a problem because these guys right here will stop this from sliding backwards before the LM8U makes any kind of connection. You'll notice that this is like a very large number right here. So from that face to where the LM8Us would be bumping into, 23 millimeters, we're only sticking out 12 millimeters out the back. So we got plenty of clearance. That is not going to be a limiting factor. Uh, next up, the clips. So these are a little bit funny because they do need to print on their side, as I mentioned, but I've created them round, which is a problem. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, the alternative here, actually. Um, oh, it's a little messy, but we can make it work. Okay. So the alternative that I didn't really think about until literally this moment is we could screw it on. The problem is, is that the lens holder screw on thing would have to be all the way out here because again, the magnifying glass, we're not modifying it. I didn't want to modify it and cut it down, cut the handle off. And therefore the handle is going to stick out the edge. So because we have the six millimeter here and the significantly more than six millimeter here, 23 millimeters, nearly 24 millimeters. Uh, what that means is that the handle can bump into the edges right now into these holders. Okay. It can bump into those, and at that point, it would cause us problems. It would stop spinning. I do think the screw-on is actually the nicest solution. I'm just having some issue thinking about how that would work without having it out in front. So if it was out in front, okay. So let's look at it from the left-hand side here. Uh, this lens with its handle on this side, let's say. In theory, I would like to just put it there and then screw something on on top of it. But actually, no, that would work. I take it back. I'm an idiot. Okay, never mind. We can make that work. We can make that work and we can avoid all this. Okay, good deal. Good deal. Good talk, guys. Good talk. So let's come back here. We don't need any of this. That, that, that. I don't know about that guy. I don't know what that guy is. So we can delete those guys. Okay, that's that guy. That guy can die too. Alright, I'm going to roll here. Okay, so... Oh, um, also... Uh, let me pull this up really quick. ba 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 ba, -ba. One second, one second. And we'll bring it over onto the screen as soon as I find it. And open. And where'd you pop up? There you are. Okay. So I had a chat with GPT. Chat Jippity Sensei. Uh, to try to figure out what this distance is. So when I did my projection this past week... Uh, it turned out well, like I said, it actually worked, but I wasn't sure how long of a distance I needed. So I cut them, I cut uh, 30 inch rods, uh, 30 inch rods would be calculator 25.4 times 30. So 76 centimeters for you people, you other people. So I cut them that long, uh, just to be safe. But, as it turned out, it wasn't really necessary. However, my point is, is that I had this conversation with ChatGPTY. Uh, I will be figuring this out. I'm going to do a video, a project video for the projector, where I go over how everything turned out in the future, and I will do these maths for that video. But, what I wanted to 
bring to your attention is uh, right here. I said when we were looking at uh, magnifying glasses to buy that the one I had bought was only 2x. I thought it was 5x, but it ended up only being 2x. And I wasn't sure how much of a difference that would make compared to the 10x ones that were on Amazon. As it turns out, according to Chat Jippity Sensei, uh, the 10x magnifying glasses are definitely better. So, for the record, if you're going to build this, 10x magnifying glass. So, uh, I can close this now, and we can get back to designing. Uh, the point of that, the reason I'm bringing it up, is I need to check back to Amazon. I need to check the OD of those guys. with uh, Because this obviously only fits are the one I bought. This lens right here is modeled on the one I bought. So, 10X magnifying glass. And I'll just grab these guys. Uh, one of those things. Just so that you're not randomly So lens is three inches, but, oh, okay, there we go. So four inches, 7.5 out to out. So that implies it's half an inch, so a quarter inch on each side. So we're looking at three and a half inches for the rim, is according to this one. And it's one of those things, if we make it a little bit larger, that's fine. Or at least I think it should be fine. Uh, you can always shim it otherwise. So for this other one we found over here, this is the other one I was looking at because it was also relatively cheap and it looked nicer. Uh, overall, 195. Okay, 100 actually. The 100 is the only thing I really need. So 100 calculator. That's 4.5, isn't it? That should be 4.5. Oh no, that's just 4. So 4 inches on that guy and we said... 4.5 on this guy, 3.5, 3.5. So if we make it four inches, a little bit more than four inches, we should be fine. So I'm gonna just update this to be, uh, update the lens. Is that the lens? I think that's the lens. To be 110 millimeters, just to give ourselves that little bit of leeway in our design. So, do, 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 do. Uh, that is fine. Actually, is that fine? I'm not sure that's fine. Uh, yeah, okay, so we're not actually using any of this. So let me go ahead and just delete it. Uh, this guy, actually, that three millimeters on the outside is correct. I did want that one. Although, maybe I make that five just to be safe. Uh, do we need to be safe? Yeah, we need to be safe. Okay. Good talk, good talk. So that's five now. Uh, the rest of this, however, can all be deleted because we don't need it anymore. Uh, this right here, I don't actually, yeah. Mm, <laughs> I think this is still necessary. So this is 83 millimeters. Uh, let me control, whoops, get back here. Control H, open this back up. Oh, that's funny. Uh, Control H actually makes a highlight in studio, in the YouTube studio. Uh, today I learned. Ah, no, get back here. I thought I already disconnected you. My bad. Panic. All right, so that guy and that guy. So 83 is what I had. So three inches for the lens opening. And over here, 90. So I guess I will up it to 90 for the lens opening. That sounds all right to me. So we will up this to 90. And delete that because again, it is not necessary. And that was just the center point for that guy. So also not necessary. And now we can continue on with our design. So there is that. Now I can go ahead and Let's see, I guess I want to do it from after we establish everything else. 
just to be on the safe side. So let me come here, hit the end button. Uh, double check what that one is. That's my rim. Okay, cool. That's fine. And at this point, I'm going to come back to this. Oh, looks like I had another center line in here that is no longer necessary. Deleted. Finish. I'm going to come back to this and extrude that 5mm out. From object. Oh, actually, 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 actually. I just realized I do want to edit this one. I do because we want to put a cutout for the, uh, what you call it? For the handle. Uh, the handles, control shift T. Yeah, it doesn't give me the width of the handles here. How about you? Does not give me the width of the handles. Just give me the length of the handles. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do. Actually, let me check the one I have over here. One second. All right, so at its widest point, it's about an inch and a quarter, just measuring with my hand. So, 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 so. I'm gonna go ahead and toss this guy in here. Quinky dink and quinky dink. And we can go ahead and now create a box. And you are going to be perpendicular perpendicular to that you are going to be actually 35 is an inch and a half inch i think 1.5 inch 38 yes about an inch and a half i was close uh so i'm going to actually yeah actually i'm going to keep it like that yes because i got inch and a quarter on the biggest part of mine and i'm going to assume that it is not going to be bigger than that so that is my explanation this is now going to be tangent to that and i'm actually going to turn this solid now that i'm thinking about it uh not tangent not tangent not tangent my bad uh this is going to be the lens cap over it that inner circle so we actually want that like that to cut out there we go actually i take it back i guess I guess this could have been tangent. This actually doesn't matter. This actually is just this part right here. Yeah, this is just this part right here. So let me actually change that up then. So coinkadink to here instead. Because that is all we're cutting out there. And then tangent here. Okay, 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 okay. Now, back to the extrusion that I was trying to do. So, uh, we do not have, oh, actually, not including that. That was the point. I, we do not have a thickness, but if we make this threaded all the way up, it doesn't matter. So, let's go minus, well, I can check the thickness on the ones I've got. Otherwise, control, whoops, remove, control shift T. Just double check that these don't have a thickness, and I'm not being silly. Uh, does not appear on that one. Yeah, does not have thickness. Okay, good, good talk. Um, I am going to say it's not going to be more than an inch thick. I'm guessing it's more like 12 millimeters thick. I'm guessing it's not going to be more than an inch thick. So we can go from here, minus... 25 there we go uh, we can also uh, grab this sketch grab that from oh actually you know what that should have there we go that's what I wanted so that's the lens hole right there 
Uh, this is going to be completely threaded right here. Uh, threads. There we are. Modeled. And whatever it recommends for threads is fine. Toss our print offsets in. And actually, now that I'm looking at it, those are deep threads. So I am going to update this to be more than five. Let's get make it seven. This offset right here. Funnily enough, it does... Oh, that's right, because the threads are going to change, aren't there? Oh, no, there's still the 120 threads. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Um, Let's see. How thick is that? It just does not look thick to me. Inspect. Yeah, 1.5 millimeter does not look thick enough. So, I'm going to update this again. Uh, that guy right there, derp. So I need to add another two inches at least, or two millimeters rather, to get myself three millimeter wall. I generally feel th uh, comfortable with three millimeter wall. And we should now be at like three and a half now. Still 1.5. Adoste. One twenty. Oh, I know why. I know why. Because the threads are cutting out the rest of it. Um, bu 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 one twenty five. Not one twenty five. Was it supposed to go the other way? One fifteen. Nope. Was not supposed to go the other way. One twenty five. Hold on. Inspect. All right, there we go. I'll take it. I'll take it. Or will I? Will I take it? Do we want to go bigger? 130. Yeah, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Um, the other option was to check the uh, which cots we have here. As you can see, that uh, the Courser has a lower uh, trough, whatever that gets called, I can't remember. So, hmm. <laughs> Actually, now that I'm saying that, now I want to come back here, drop this back down to five, and see what we can get, get away with. Update this to... Uh, bu 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 bu. we were at 120 before, right? And then just make them more coarse. More coarse is fine. I mean, completely coarse is probably a little bit of a problem, but slightly more coarse is fine. So let's see. Um, assuming that we're going to roll this down halfway, that means we need to spin one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven threads in half is three, so one, two, three, and a half. Three and a half turns is, to tighten it down, is probably all right. I think I'm all right with that. So now we can go ahead and new component, lens cap. We can grab this sketch again, turn the body off. Well, actually, that body is the only one I really need. This can have all this stuff. We'll go from object. Uh, I guess I should have done this before, shouldn't I have? I should have, yes. Good talk. Let's back you up just a second. Back here, let's get that sketch in place first. Try to get the front face. There we go. Project. Boink. Boink. Oh, that's right. I didn't even project it last time. Derp. I just extruded. Derp, derp, derp. All right. From object that minus three millimeters. I'm thinking about this. All right. 
right? Yeah. Should be alright. Actually, we may need to go a little bit larger, don't we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this is... Uh, let's look at this really quick. This is 120 millimeters, and we have 120 millimeter threads, which means that they're 20, 120 millimeters on the OD. So we actually do need to make a sketch to make it bigger. Let us hit that and just double check that I'm correct about that. Uh, inspect. Okay, never mind. That's not going to give me the information I want, but I'm pretty sure I'm correct about that. So. We will make a sketch. Draw Y. Project out. Project out. That guy and that guy. Okay. And then... Concentric. And we can give you 3 millimeter walls. And we should be fine, right? Right? I may be completely wrong about that, but we'll see what happens. From object, there, three millimeters, other direction, okay. And then that from object, that uh, minus 12 millimeters. Or I guess I should go, well, not minus evidently, but I should probably go more than that. Uh, we probably should honestly go the full distance. Yeah, just to be on the safe side, we'll go the full distance. Am I thinking about this correctly? Okay, I'm not thinking about this correctly. So my idea here was that this cutout would allow this cap to press against the lens, which is true. That is accurate. The problem is that the handle is not enough. If I just press against the handle, like I was thinking, that's probably not enough. So we're going to need to put an inner ring in here, which is fine. We can do that. And I just realized I have the wrong projection. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. Where's my sketch at? That sketch, turn that sketch off. So this is the one I was looking for. And that one... Yeah, that one can and should... Can and should? No, actually, they should go the same distance. I take it back. Both of them should go the same distance. And... The... So it's going to be unnecessary. There's definitely, I definitely can't see these handles being less than 12 millimeters. If I'm wrong, then sue me. I don't feel like being sued, so we're just going to go 20 and call it a day. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and edit that one after I add this circle in here. So let's see. Actually, I'm going to edit this sketch and oh, actually, 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 that is the lens right there in theory. That is the lens right there in theory. So, 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 so. Is this really 10 millimeters right here? It doesn't feel like 10 mil millimeters. All right, I guess it is. Huh, the rim is really 10 millimeters thick? That, That is a bulky rim. Holy cow. Okay. Um, I'll, Although I did round. I did round both the numbers, to be fair. So, my point is, is that I need something to press against the rim. So... At this point, at this point, I actually do think I will come back to this one and put in this one instead. We are just going to go like this and go five millimeters here. Five millimeters. Oh, I guess I also need that projection. I do need that center. All right, never mind. I'm changing my mind again. Last time I'm changing my mind. I need this line right here in order to do that, in order to make this rim 
So we're going to do that. Finish and come back to here. And I've never tried this before, but I'm hoping it works. Uh, that was not the correct one. This one. So I've never tried actually grabbing sketches from multiple... I mean, grabbing profiles from multiple sketches before. We're going to see whether or not it works. Okay, does not work. Good. That's fine. We can just create another extrusion. Turn the backplate off. From object. Distance to object. To there. Huh? What's my problem? Oh, I'm not in the lens. I'm not in the lens cap. That's why. That is why it's not working. Turn you off. Turn you off. Turn you off. That. From object there. Distance to object there. Okay. Why? Ah, fusion, fusion, fusion. You're killing me, fusion. Yeah, see, that works. So why does that work? Distance to object. There. What if I grab the rim instead? Oh, is it because I'm actually clicking on... Okay, I think it's because it's actually seeing the body of the lens plate. That's my guess. No, actually it's not. It just hates me. That's all. What about this ledge? Hmm. Fusion. Why? Fusion. Why? From object there. Distance to object there. How about this rim fusion? How about that edge? Actually, what if we do that? Nope. This. That is actually the button I was looking for. I meant to do that button. Join. <laughs> I actually, I don't know. I don't know. You win, Fusion. You win. Uh, you should only be, well, actually, that is like that because I clicked that. But you should only be 20 millimeters. Join. I do not know what your problem is, but you win this time. So, I am going to, uh, actually, that is, which one did I extrude? I extrude that one. So yeah, that should be, let us, I was going to, I'm going to toss uh, offsets in. That's why I'm mumbling to myself right now. Uh, let me get this thread in and then we're going to take cross section. Just make sure everything looks hunky dory thread. That guy, 120. We're on three or four. I need to double check that modeled. Okay. Uh, let's come back to here. Double check this thread right here. Four. It was supposed to be four. Four. Okay. And then we can turn that on, take a cross section. Inspect. Section analysis. That guy. Oh, there it is. On the other side. Okay. Yeah, okay. Just want to make sure I had clearance on the inside, which I was pretty sure I did. And now, now we just need to add a print offset. And this can probably be pretty loose. The fact of the matter is, is that when you, uh, we are on new offset. When you do these 3D printed threads. Oh, crap. Okay, 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 okay. So, uh, we are going to fix this. Um, that would have made it a lot more difficult. So the offsets here, uh, because this is contiguous right here, 
I can just click once and it will be fine. Set face. Yeah, okay, okay. You see how it selects all of them? So that's, I didn't have that because we had the uh, hole in the middle. So I'm just gonna have to add the hole afterwards. So minus 0.3. We can be pretty loose because when you tighten it down, when you tighten a screw down onto another thing, it tends to lock up. So when you tighten down onto the lens, it should lock itself up and not want to move, is the idea. And just to be safe, because we're doing this as a separate function, I'm going to go ahead and from object there, distance to object, or actually all, all would be better. Liparuski and cut. All right, there we go. All right, so that is one project down. And we have two more to go, two more little ones to go. Turn that sketch off. Um, bu, 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 bu. oh, that's the, actually, that's the other thing I was going to do that I thought of halfway through here, uh, down here in lens assembly, this guy right here. So that guy, this guy, which offsets do I have? Okay. I have that, those offsets. I actually want to, whoops, don't do that. Hold on. Time's out. Time out. Time out. All right, I do want to add a massive offset right here so that it doesn't uh, rub at all. The rod is just gonna float in between there is what's gonna happen here. And that's fine because it is making contact with the bearing. So it doesn't need to make contact with the plastic. And this way we don't have to worry about it rubbing at all. Okay. There we go. Uh, turn the lens cap back on. And let's get, I didn't color the lens last time. Let's go ahead and get that. So acrylic actually should be glass, but ba -ba 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 -ba. roll down. Where is clear? I guess that's clear. So there's that. Actually it looks kind of dark. Ah, here we go. That's better. And then plastic. Whoops. I always hit enter there. Plastic. Uh, we can put it purple. We can make it purple. That is not what I wanted. Uh, let me drag this to that. There we go. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You know what? Maybe I do want a more opaque lens because that's kind of hard to see. Uh, glass. Do, 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 do. Frosted light. Nope. Frosted medium. I'm not able to tell the difference. Uh, let's see. How do I remove all? Uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. Lens, right click, right click, remove appearances. Maybe if I get out of the appearances menu. Uh, appearance, properties. Hmm. <laughs> All right, you know what? It's staying how it is. Still hard to see, but that's fine. Uh, what is that? Oh, that's the nut. That's the nut just hanging out in there. All right. All right, all right, all right. So, that is that. Hit the save button. Okay. And new. And I am going to hit the bathroom really quick. BRB.
All right, and we are back. Okay. I didn't really want to leave the screen blank. That's why I turned it back on. So, uh, next up is the cutter holder. So, let me take a couple quick measurements. Assuming that, and we should be able to, but assuming that all the arbors can fit beneath the discs or between the discs, depending on how I set it up. It looks like a stack of discs is a stack of 10 discs, I should say, because I'm not going to pick all these up at once. Uh, I'm going to call it 14 and a quarter millimeters just to be on the safe side. So let me write that down really quick. 14 and a quarter, 0.25 millimeters, disc, disc, height, and then diameter is 32. I'm going to go ahead and round that up to 33. Just because they don't need to be snug, there's no reason for them to be snug. So 33. And I guess actually we can toss these in here. So I have them. Uh, that I guess should be disc with a C. Disc dia is the 33. Arbor is three millimeters and 4.25. Actually, I guess I don't need the top part. We can just use the bottom part. So Arbor dia is three millimeters and the overall length is, 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 is 38 and a half ish. So we'll call it 39. Again, doesn't have to be exact because a little bit of space is fine. Arbor length is 39. And that should be everything we need. So let us get designing. Uh, let's see. How are we going to assemble this is actually a question uh, because it is in two pieces or it's going to need rather to be printed in two pieces. I'm pretty sure at least two pieces. Um, <laughs> the clips, the clips in theory, actually. So if I just print in one piece, so let me turn the lights back on. All right. And we can go back to the camera really quick. Okay, camera, 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 camera. All right, camera. So, um, we could cut the bottom off. Again, the top is larger than the bottom. So what that means is that it can't slide down. So if it can't slide down, then there's no need to have the top, which means that we can actually cut this. Uh, yeah, I guess I'll grab a different color. We can cut this right below the clips, not print this bottom, only print this up here. And we can print it upside down, I think. Or we could print it in two pieces. We could also cut it right here, print this up here, and then print this right here, upside down. And then these clips, uh, we have four of these. So if we pattern it around four times around the center, then that can actually be printed as a piece that slots into a groove in here. You get me? So from the bottom, it would look like this. So those are my grooves. And then actually, I guess the groove, I take it back. The groove would actually come all the way to here and this would be open in the middle. So that's the groove. And then the clips 
I'll use a darker brown just because. Would be like this. And that would be printed flat. And it, the reason why it's okay for that be, be printed flat, again, is because it's flexing in that direction. It's not flexing in the same direction as the layer lines. It's flexing per perpendicular to the layer lines. So that is safe to be printed flat like that. So this is interesting. So again, we can do two pieces and then just screw this down to that or super glue it, frankly, it could be super glued. So that is an idea. Mm. I kind of think I like that. Um, we do miss out on this bottom storage area down here. We can, however, make this however tall it needs to be. Let me go ahead and take a... Wait, I take it back. Again, this should tell me how much I have. 50. We have 50 of these. So 50 times 14 times 15, let's call it. So 50 times 15 is 75-ish. Uh, something like 75. Uh, 75 is about three inches so about yay long so we're gonna have a case about yay long if you can imagine that sitting down on the table to there and then a little rod about yay tall i guess do it this way you can so you can actually see with the camera so that long is the case and then maybe that long for the rod There we go. Because the rod needs to come down to this edge right here. It needs to come right below that. So the overall size ends up being about yay, yay big, which does not seem bad to me. That seems reasonable. So back into Fusione. Let's get this designed. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. I do think I'm printing it in two pieces. So let's just start with the easy part, which is the disc holder. And again, this is going to have a screw on lid. I cannot type today, evidently. New component lid. All right, so. Uh, from the top disk dia three millimeter wall and we can bring this up uh, so the way that this is going to attach I kind of think that I'd be happier with it attaching without any hmm <laughs> actually you know what we could get fancy and we could actually screw it on that's a possibility um yeah let's do that which means that this is going to want to be something like six i guess although back to i was going to put a lip on it so 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 let us do this. Come back here. Uh, let's take that three millimeters as my lip around. Let's take this as the center shaft. The center shaft can be like, let's say eight. And then the wall around it will make it another three. Okay, cool. So we can make this like five, let's say. I think that's right or at least acceptable I'm gonna say that's acceptable grab that and 
from object. So now this is the floor. So this will go three. And then that from object there minus 80 or not a minus uh, 80 again 75 is like what we have but I'm gonna go ahead and make a little bit more and then we can go ahead and thread that not full length yes good got lucky there so that's from the top and we can thread that I mean whatever it wants honestly it will just make it a little bit coarser uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. let's see what this is inspect uh, minimum distance 1.76 so let's change these up a little bit Forty two. That is going to make the whole because I made this separate. That is going to affect the whole entire cylinder. It's going to automatically update it. That's how fusion works. Uh, reset there and there. Minimum distance 2.25. Honestly, I guess I kind of will do that. So what was the length I did here? I did 10 millimeters. Let us actually delete uh, just that one. Delete that. Just so that this doesn't affect that, I'm going to go ahead and make this 70. And then extrude that from object there. And, 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 and. That is 10. That's what we discussed. New body. We can do this now again. And it won't be that big of a deal. Or it won't automatically grow the other one. Is rather is what I meant to say. And I can even go up to 42 at this point. Modeled. Okay. And as we did in our other design... Let's go ahead and join these two and toss a revolution on here. Uh, actually, I will take an intersect of the body. Makes sense to me. Uh, let's see. Nah, I should include this one. I should include that one. And then I want that. Yeah, that is the further side. And we toss this in here. Just give it a good old 45. And now we can start our revolution. Select axis that and join. There we go. So now we don't have that overhang there. And we can come back and 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 and. Toss our offsets, that, and that, minus 0.3, okay. Uh, come down here, we're going to thread this as well as previously discussed. Thread, modeled, uh, we're going to go ahead and, actually that looks fine to me. So, we had plenty of meat down here, not that big of a deal. Next up is the lid. And as previously discussed, we should give ourselves an offset first before we screw everything up. Come down here, come up there. In the wrong plane. Huh. What is your problem, Fusion? There we go. Project, I'm going to want... I guess... I guess I'll take... What do I want? Uh, 
that probably makes the most sense. Body, turn you back on. Okay, never mind. That did not project. I take it back. That obviously did not work. Uh, ba 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 ba. All right, we're just going to grab the inside there, and then we'll draw our own line. So you are now a that, and then this was a forty-two. Uh, plus three, so forty-five. Okay. Uh, actually, 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 not okay. 40 and then 45. 45. Uh, pfft, terp. Uh, 2.5. And actually, you know what? I should make it larger. I should. I should. Okay. Bodies. So this is going three that way. And then we come back the other way. Minus 10. Join. And then. Turn that body off. And grab the threads. Modeled. And these were 42s, right? Although I forget what I chose on the thread coarseness what did we choose 42 by twos 42 by twos excellent and 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 that should be good yeah i don't think we need anything else so now on to the stem holder uh first though i'm going to really quick give ourselves a little bit of color Plastico, orange, pink, and now onto the stem holder. Uh, I mean, I really should call this arbor holder, but same difference. Grab that guy, project out. Uh, but, 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 but I guess I'm going to project out the sketch instead. Okay. And now we can extrude. Turn that on just so I know I'm going to, from the correct direction. From object. There. Minus. Or actually, I guess not minus. Distance to object. And then arbor length. And let me double check that one. Because we actually don't want to go the whole length. So the 14. Oh, the 14.2 is not that. Uh, what is arbor length? We have that in as the full length, don't we? Yeah, it's 39. So we have it in as the full length. So I only want to go down to the... down to the skinny part, which is 17.5. And then we need the wall thickness. So 17.5 plus the wall thickness of the clips. I'm gonna go ahead and make these a little beefy. I'm gonna make them four or five. Let's make them five to start off with, okay. Um, fusion. Fusion, I can have new body. Why are you doing this to me, fusion? Why are you being a jerk? Okay, there we go. That works. Distance to object. Okay. Okay, fusion. Thanks for trolling. Thanks for trolling. All right, uh, turn the top body off now. Grab our threads. Hope that it's going in the same correct direction. It is. Um, shoot, I forget how far that was. Um, ba 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 ba. So I do know that we kept with the default, which should be 1.5. However, I do not recall how far we extruded here. Five millimeters. Okay. And let's just double check before I. 
Yay, 8 by 1.25, good. So, 5 millimeters. And actually, we can probably go... Huh? Oh, that's the lid. That is why. Never mind, never mind. Uh, 5 millimeters. I'm actually going to go 6. 6 instead. That way we have a little bit extra, just in case. And then I'm going to drop the offset on this one instead of... Minus 0.3. Instead of... That did... That, that, that's not great. Okay, you know what? Never mind. Never mind. We're going to do the offset over here. I have determined. Bodies. Turn you off. Turn the sketch off. Minus point three. Alright, cool. Alright, so now we can and I guess I just toss this in here. New component. Arbor holders. Uh, arbor clips, rather. Come back up here. Toss that offset plane there. Come back down here. Use that offset plane. Turn this guy off, turn the body off, don't turn the body off. Project that face. Turn the body off now. And now we can start the fun stuff. So, uh, actually I guess we're just, ah, bu -bu 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 -bu. now I'm gonna want to create a box here I'm gonna to want to draw this stem for it as well so center that on that and then get that on there and then we can start figuring out how we want to do this clip um do 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 so I should probably design it the same exact way I just designed all the other ones, which means that I'm going to be crying in just a minute because I still, despite the, ugh, despite the fact that I've done this about five or six times now, for some reason, never do it correctly the first time. So let's pull these guys back up. Um, that, what did you just do, Fusion? Okie dokies, and then I'm going to head back to Miscellaneous. 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 Catch up. Thank you. All right. So let us take a look at the sketch again. I want the other one, though, because the other one doesn't have the extra stuff in it. Ah, there we go. All right, so I do it 30% that way. This is my inside diameter, the outside, I got a 45 there. Got this one millimeter offset ring, which is the offset from the backside. That is fine. Uh, then we got these guys, we got that. That comes out like that, okay. Uh, we're not going to be going all the way through, so I don't have to worry about that. And actually, these 30 percenters, we don't need to worry about either because those are not involved this time. So it's actually going to come there, there, there. I should leave a cutout in the middle still. So just need to figure that one out. So, 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 so. Should be fine. Okay. Um, first thing we need to do here is... The arbor diameter is three millimeters, correct? Yes, the arbor diameter is three millimeters. So, arbor diameter. Um, I may want to make this bigger is what I'm thinking at this point. So that is my one consideration because 
we're going to want this to not take up, to leave enough meat around the edges here is my problem that I'm running into here. And we also want to put a big gap in the middle of it. That way it flexes more. It's probably not necessary for it to flex more now that I'm thinking about it. Um, and also I probably should have, rather than do that, do this instead. That way I can use this as part of my 45. So we grab that, grab that, grab that. And actually this is not even correct either. So let's undo that because that is my inside diameter. I need my outside diameter. And what did we do for that? I forgot. Are we one or 1.5? Okay. 1.5. Really? Is it 1.5? Huh, that feels a little thick. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. okay, I just took a look at it in real life. I guess it's not that thick. Uh, let's take a quick look over here. I kind of want to drop this down. I'm going to go 1.2. Okay, uh, this guy, I wanted to go here. And then I wanted to grab my 45s here from the outside. So that I can actually cut. Okay. So there's that. And then we have our one millimeter offset from the backside. One millimeter. So that could go tangent to that. And then I have my box, which actually we can use this. So this box goes here, right? I'm pretty sure this box goes here. And then how do we design this again? Uh, 1.5 from that point, it looks like. That, that, that centered 1.5 from that. How do we get this width again? And what are you doing? Oh, you're the distance between tools. So that's right. Okay, 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 okay. So that's not important to us. Uh, that's there and there. It's centered. That's there, there, and centered. But I had the other box in here. Centered there, centered there, and then 1.5 here. Whoops, control Z. 1.5. Uh, 1.5. That does not look to be working. That's to the inside. That's to the inside. Oh, I see what. I see why. So this actually isn't 1.5 like that. That is what ever this is that's whatever this is so my only question is how did i determine this distance right here again eight millimeters what is constraining this this distance right here what is stopping me from making this smaller It wouldn't be these guys. I can delete these guys. Yeah. Does not change anything. I should be able to delete these guys and the inner one won't change. Yeah, correct. The inner one is still stuck there. So. This is so funny. I can't believe. I don't have an offset here. I was thinking maybe I had an offset there. Do you guys have some kind of quinket ink? Just those quinket inks. Huh. Let's look at another one. 
yeah two millimeters because that's heavier so that just matches that makes sense oh here we go so that set that one on that one but over here i don't see that so why don't i see that i guess there's an equals in here somewhere i don't oh there we go well that's tangent to here i get that much Oh, here's a tangent. Here is a tangent. So that's tangent to that right there. Okay. That explains that one. All right. So we had that tangent to here, but I'm pretty sure that's going to... Okay. That didn't completely get rid of my center gap. Okay. I accept that. Okay. 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 One of these times I'll remember how this whole entire thing works. So if I rotate this around... Let's see what it looks like. We're going to do that and then make that equal to that. And that will give us an idea. So this corner is what we're left with. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let's see. Let's see what that looks like. Three millimeters across that corner there. Um, I kind of feel like I want a little bit more, honestly. Uh, the other thing to check is what is this actual distance here? I can get rid of that box now. Three millimeters. Ah, that makes sense. It makes sense that it's three millimeters because this is three millimeters in the middle right here. So. Huh. <laughs> uh, interesting thing I'm noticing. is normally my hinge point is right here but it's not going to be it's going to be right here instead because this is a circle instead of a square actually i guess no it would be up here anyway um i'm just trying to think about it's one of those things. There may not be a point in having a gap all the way back here. This may be solid starting at the circle right here. I may also want to put a curve in here. So grab this right here. And then grab the center point of that. Tangent that. Uh, tangent that though. Not quinky dink it. Tangent it. Is that really a center point? Oh, I guess these are two different size. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. These are two different size circles. So. Uh, let's see what it looks like if I tangent the other one. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So cut that. I was just looking at relieving this corner right here is what I was looking at. I'm not even sure this is correct right here. I probably shouldn't have done this. We'd probably do this instead. And then uh, maybe do that. There we go. Uh, we can consider that. I'm going to go ahead and toss the other, the opposing one in right now. Actually, no. Back to, I'll extrude this in two pieces. So, if I do this, I'm just trying to add a little bit of relief. I, I've said that, that's the second time I've said that, but a little bit of relief so it flexes a little bit easier. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba, bodies minus four is what I said. And then the other thing I wanted to do was just check what this is right here. That to here. Get this distance. Okay, so that's down to half a millimeter of thickness in the middle there which is not great. Hmm. 
Hmm. One second, might be sneezing, maybe. Okay, yeah, sneezed. <laughs> yeah, so half a millimeter of thickness there is pretty darn thin. Uh, it makes sense because we're taking about half of it and this is only a millimeter and a half thick. Uh, give it, or 1.2 millimeters thick, I was going to say. I meant to say. So, honestly, that relief may not be worth it. So, let's go ahead and delete it. Finish. And fix that extrusion. <laughs> and we can do that, as I was discussing earlier. New body, mirror, that face, okay. And then circle pattern, body, select that guy four times. Okay, we combine all those guys. Okay, and then we just come up here and combine that and that keep tools cut and then just add a little bit of offset just a hair just a hair uh bu -bu -bu. yeah i do want that there Minus 0.05. Okay. Add some color in. Plastico. Platic. Plastico. Blue and green. Turn that back on. Come back up top. And we are done. <laughs> yeah, it's funny how small that looks down bottom. Again, this will be stored upside down like this is my plan. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, maybe I do. So I had reduced this because they looked kind of thick. But maybe I do come back and thicken them up. 1.5. Huh. Really? You got a problem with that? Okay, let's delete that then, and then try this. All right, cool. You match that. Oh, I see, I see, I see. I lose the gap because 1.5 and 1.5 is 3. So that brings it all the way to here. That is why. Okay. Um, 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 um. In that case, we will delete this and we'll define this based on that. So what if I do one millimeter? Let's see how that looks. I think that looks fine. Uh, the other thing I'm looking at is because of how small these are, I might actually want to go less than 45 here. So let's attempt to change that thirty okay all right so 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 last question do we want to make this bigger than eight do we want to go ten here we can I don't think that's unreasonable so come back to the sketch Make that 10. And then we just need to update the threads because that's going to automatically shrink this as previously discussed. 10 millimeters. Um, Is that coarse enough? I think it is. And then we change that to, whoops, not that one, that one. To 10 millimeters. Okay, I think I'm happy. 
I think I'm happy at this point. Um, yeah, yeah. So the head. So let's take a quick look at that really quick. Quick look at that really quick. Yes, thank you. The heads are going to be like this. So that means that we actually need to compensate for that. So the heads are four and a quarter, which sounds familiar, but 4.25. Okay, no, the heads are still smaller than the plastic, so we are fine. Never mind. Um, do, 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 do. And then this is including that, right? So this ring, this ring is actually just trying to save us plastic. As I have discussed before, um, on smaller prints like this, leaving this hollow actually doesn't save you hardly any plastic because you end up adding in this extra wall here and here. So if this was all full, we'd only have the outside wall and the inside wall at three layers a piece. Typically speaking, you have three walls, uh, three to four, depends on your slicer. And then the rest is 10% hollow, 90% um, hollow, 10% infill. Typically speaking, you might go to 20, but the point is it's still 80% air minimum. So if this was solid, that means that most of this space would be error, min error anyway. Whereas right now, this space is 20% more error, or it has 20% error that it wouldn't have. But we're also losing this wall thickness and this wall thickness, which again, if it's three or four, so let's say it's four, and your uh, nozzle is a 0.4, so four times 0.4 for your uh, plastic width, your extrusion width, is 16, right? 1.6, it's 1.6 millimeters. So we're adding an extra 1.6 millimeters on each of those, which ends up being 3 millimeters of plastic, uh, extra inside of this. So you got to decide whether or not that 3 extra millimeters of plastic really makes up for the 20, the extra 20, or not extra 20%, but you know, the 20% air that you get back in that volume which doesn't really seem like it does to me so all that being said um doo -doo 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 -doo, where i was going with this is we could leave the heads because when we extruded this guy right we did the 17.5 right here plus the five millimeters for the bottom that 17.5 was the head which means that we were started counting from this ledge right here. Original plan was actually to have the heads recessed up in here. So at that point, what I really should have done was just use this instead. So we can come back and change this is what I'm getting to is my point. So we can change this. And at this point, the heads, Again, they will be smaller than this ring of plastic, and we already know that. Actually, we don't know. I take it back. So that ring is now getting in the way. That's where I was going with, with this. So it may be, in fact, important to, instead of tangenting this right here, grab this and... Uh, actually, we're going to delete this. Yeah, we're going to delete this. We're going to toss the... 4.5 in here and that's a rough number but that's our arbor head we'll toss a one millimeter from there make that and then we need to project out turn this body off grab that sketch instead project out that sketch line turn the body back on then turn that off and we want to tangent that sketch line. And then we can finish, and there we are. Turn the body back on. So now these heads will go up in, into this empty area. We can further justify having the empty area, and we're not gonna run into the center pillar here. Not only that, but by moving these out further, that gives us more room to flex in right here. Which is nice. It's a nice bonus. Not necessary, but it's a nice bonus. 
So um, we should have all our offsets in that we need, which means that we are done with this one. So that is sketch or design number two done. I think we're at something like an hour and 15 minutes updating the projector. We are now at two hours and seven minutes. So that was less than an hour doing this one. I'm actually surprised. I bring it up because that actually felt like maybe half an hour, but obviously it wasn't. Uh, so this is the uh, Dremel cutoff. I always do two <laughs> T's for some reason. Cutoff wheel folder. Save. And now on to the final design of the night. And hopefully this one doesn't take us an hour. Because I'd like to get to bed a little bit earlier than that. So top down. Um, never mind. New component case. We just have a case and a lid. This one is pretty simple. So we need to determine the total width of all this stuff. So let me line up really quick everything. Just a rough idea. And I probably want to leave myself... Well, see, I don't see myself ever getting extra collets from my Dremel. But I'm... Because I should have all the sizes necessary at this point. But I'm a little bit paranoid. I have eight of these. So we could do two rows of four if we want to. And let me see how that lines up compared to the three nozzles. It looks to me like it lines up pretty well. But again, we were going to do spring-loaded uh, inserts for these guys. So that is going to take up a little extra space, a little extra more space. So I think that's what we're going to do. I think we're going to see how well we can make this work. So I'm going to actually just start off. Actually, 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 let us determine my widths here, diameters. So 14 on the first one. So let's toss this in here. 14. And actually, mm, burr, 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 burr. instead, 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 instead. Um, so let's shrink that down since that is obviously way, what you call it, way bigger than we need. So I'm going to toss, that's going to be like that. And then I will toss this guy in here. So this is 14 by 14. Okay. Uh, this is the biggest one. So I'm going to go ahead and toss my offsets off of this guy. So three millimeter wall. Hopefully should be fine enough. If we come back, if we need to come back and change it, we will. All right. And I'm going to toss a center line in here. And I actually don't think I need this. Now that I'm thinking about it, probably not necessary. Uh, that being said, <laughs> I'm probably going to come back and put that back in in just a minute. So that is my keyless chuck. And then we have... The, what do you call it, flex shaft thingamabob. And the widest that is, is about. So actually it depends on how I put it in here, right? Because it's a hex shape. The other thing actually is how I'm going to get these guys out. So I probably shouldn't make him fully recessed in here. I should probably leave him down a little bit. Yes, okay. Um... Da, 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 da. Yeah, I guess I need both measurements. So, actually, no, I don't. Nine point. We can just draw the hex. That makes sense to me. Just draw the hex. And then hex. Centered. And we'll make that parallel to that. And that's 9.5. 9.5. All right, so there's the hex. Good. Good, good, good. So now we can just make that uh, collinear with that and have those guys 
boinkied like that. And now we can put our three millimeter wool in here. And, 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 and. Uh, we need to center it up and down. So back to, I said I deleted this one and I may need to put it back. This is why I figured I probably need to put it back. Do that. All right, cool. So there's that. That's the second one. Um, what? Okay, that's why. That is why it's not constrained. Understood. Final one. This is a circle again. Uh, it's actually not a circle. It has flats on the side. How do I want to do that? Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. I guess I also include that. I guess. So we got an 11 millimeter diameter th circle. I just turned off my construction line again like a doofus. So, centered on this, we have 11 millimeters. And actually, this... Do, 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 actually, no, yeah, I don't need that hex. I don't need that hex. So, bu -bu 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 -bu, that is tangent there. And that means that, similarly, I don't need that. However, we do need the flats here. The flats here are 9.3 all right and now we toss our other center vertical line in here centered on that that is three millimeters from that and that is three millimeters from that there we go so uh, these have various heights. Uh, I don't know. Can I use all of them? No, nah, I probably shouldn't. So yeah, I probably want to make these compartments very various heights. In which case, maybe I should go six millimeters in the middle here. That way I can divide these walls up. And extrude them separately. Uh, you look like you need to be perpendicular. Okay, no, I have a perpendicular up here. That is why. Okay. So we toss that in at that divided by two. Actually, you know what I should do? I should do that. Do that and then make that that times two. Same thing over here. That time. Whoops. That time. Come on, fusion. That times two and uh, wall thickness. Okay, there we are. Good, good. So we're gonna finish, go like this, get the floor, three millimeters for the floor, and then extrude the individual components. So, from object that is the wrong object all right so this first one is the keyless chuck the keyless chuck wants to be 11 millimeters tall now nah, let's make it 10 millimeters tall next one is the hex that one wants to be Nine. I think that one wants to be nine. That is not correct. Uh, first off, from object there, distance nine and join. There we go. And finally, this guy. This guy wants to be honestly 6.5 maybe. 
I'm starting to get the idea that I'm probably going to need to do something else. Because, wait, 6.5. Aren't you supposed to be 9? Oh, I didn't actually select from object. All right, there we go. Um, bu 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 bu. See, the problem I'm thinking is that I'm going to have a hard time getting my fat fingers into here is the problem I'm running into. So, how can we fix this? Um, ba 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 ba. I'd almost want to put a slot in it to reach through. The only problem is that, oh, you know the other thing? I also should include, where the heck is it? My wrench. Where is my wrench? Oh, it's in the case. Ugh. One sec. Dremel case. There it is. I should include the Dremel wrench in this, in which case we can use the Dremel wrench to get these guys out in that case. So let's go ahead and, and then at that point, everything can be the same size. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete these. We're gonna come back to here Delete that, or actually delete these guys. Yeah, delete these guys and change these just to be that instead. Okay, and then uh, let's see what the Dremel wrench width, blah, 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 I can't talk. Dremel wrench width is. Um, actually, it doesn't even matter, does it? Does it matter? Does it matter? Where's my size on this? Oh, there it is. 9.5. Um, I'm thinking it doesn't matter only because... Nah, I should anyway. So it's 8.10 is the answer. The answer is 8.10. I'm going to go ahead and toss the center line for this guy in. And the reason it matters is because I'm probably not going to go the whole way through. So I was thinking about just drawing all the way like this, but I think that makes less sense. So. Uh, I said 8.1, right? So actually, let's make it 8.5 just to give myself some breathing room. There's that. And then it is less than a millimeter thick, probably. Millimeter and a half. I'm terrible at this. All right. So anyway, <laughs> um, I'll probably use offsets for that one. I'll probably just offset that one. So 1.5. And then you center on that. And we repeat the process over here. So first one, second one, and then I can turn construction back line back on. Go opposite of the other guy. Oh my goodness, those are not construction lines. There's that, there's that. Centered on that. Centered on that. And these are just equal to the other guy that that and that and that okay so we will come back in here clear these slots out okay and at this point we can just go the full height of the biggest one which is the keyless chuck and we can add a little bit more 
So let's make that, actually let's not add a little bit more right now. We're just going to go to 22.5 and we'll add more later. There we go. So now they can sit down in there and I just use the wrench to poke them out. So. Hydrate. Now we need a sketch for the inserts, the collet inserts. Uh, they are all three millimeters, correct? Let's double check that logic. Nope, not correct. 4.2. I couldn't remember. All right, 4.2 is what we're working with. Um, I do want to do it the same way I did the other one. We're going to pattern it around, I believe, or not around, but pattern it in a square extrusion. So I need to start out with, I got to figure out the overall size and then go from there, I believe is what it comes down to. I'm just trying to think if there's anything else I need to take care of. I don't think there is. Let me open up the barrel sander and see what should be some around here somewhere nope should be before this barrel sander there we go whoops that is the wrong one it was the ping the ping got me fusion can't ha handle me having so many items in the same directory why what cancel I don't know go away don't save there we go all right so the inserts the flex ones turn everything else off um, how did I go about designing these guys? I think I did a loft. Yeah, those are lofts. The only question is, what did I do for height? So this is the height right here. Nope, it is not. Okay, so I just used whatever this height was. So that's five millimeters. Um, 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 do we need five millimeters? Because right now I got a three millimeter floor. I kind of, let me take a quick look at it IRL. I kind of feel like I do, but I may be wrong about that one. So popping this guy out. How do you look? All right. So if this was another... Two millimeters shorter how would it look i feel like it'd be too short two millimeters shorter so i think i'm going to actually increase the base of this um ba -ba 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 -ba. the only thing i'm thinking about next so i'm thinking all right so finish sketch how tall are these guys is what I, the other thing I was thinking. How much room do I need for these guys? All right, so that one is definitely taller. Okay, so they do get taller. And I believe this the one that I have in my hand is the largest one. Actually, that one looks like it's taller than the others. Okay, but not taller than the largest one I have. So my maximum height here is... 19.25 but part of that will be in the floor so 19 minus 5 again if I'm using 5 as my insert as my flex height so that's 14 and that would definitely put it smaller than these guys so we should be good and actually that also means that I can have the 5 millimeter size on uh, height on this side so yeah we should be good so so, 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 let us get working. So this is 4.2. Uh, what was the 
wall thickness that I used here. 1.2? Yep, 1.2. Let's keep with that. 1.2. Uh, I also need to figure out the overall size. <laughs> So this was the mandrel inside, and that's the flex, and I went out to Okay, so I went out two millimeters from my minor diameter, or from the diameter of my tool. Okay, it went from there. Okay, 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 okay. What is this right here? What is that one doing? I get this one. This is my ledge. But what is that guy? Because that should be the inner diameter. That should be the outer diameter. And then I also have this guy. There's that. There's that. Question mark. Oh, that's right. That's the shell. And then that's the... Okay, okay. Because I put them inside of a shell. Is that shell necessary? Yes, it is for alignment purposes. It doesn't have to be that tall, but it is necessary. Right. Right, 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 right. Okay. Gotcha. So, um, at this point, let's see. This is the bottom. This is the bottom. So, let's do this. Two millimeters. 1.2 millimeters. And then... 1.2 millimeters. And then... This is going to be construction this time. And I'm going to go with a square instead. And rather than that, let me project that... Um, actually, let me just project the edge. And I just want to be parallel to that. All right, cool. At least for right now. Tangent, 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 tangent. All right, so I'm going to have four of these in a row. I probably want to leave, well, I can just use an offset. I can just use a print offset, so I don't have to worry about calculating that. So the total width of this is 4.2 plus 2 times 2 plus 1.2 plus 1.2. All right, cool. Because the reason all that matters is I need to draw the uh, extension. I need to draw around here. And I'm going to want a rim around it. Do I need a rim around it? I don't actually think I need a rim around it, actually, now I'm thinking about it. Actually, actually, actually. Yeah, not necessary, I don't think. Um, if I regret this later, I will regret it later. Other option. Other option is actually to line it up with this, but I don't think I do. So... All that math that I was talking about determines this because we're going to be square patterning. We need to put this guy in the corner. So let's just do that now. This guy goes into the corner. And then we need to determine the height and width of this based on four by two. So this is going to be that. Uh, let's put parentheses in here. That plus that times two because it's each side for the diameter plus same thing times two plus that times two and then times four all right cool and now we can go ahead and center that up on that and this actually 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 
let us get some parameters here in here to make our life easier. So flex wall is 1.2. Uh, flex shell is also 1.2. And flex lip is 1.2. And call it dia is 4.2. Uh, and top bottom offset is two. Okay. Now total square size, uh, total flex square size is call it, call it plus flex uh, top bottom offset times two plus flex uh, wall times two plus flex shell times two plus flex lip times two okay there we go so we can replace that total flex size times four that did not come out to the same number um ba -ba 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 -ba. Ba -ba -ba -ba. that's that that's that that's that uh this is the shell whoops so yeah i screwed up there so let's delete that yeah 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 i forgot i didn't have enough circles in here so 1.2 now the bright side is The bright side is that, uh, so this is flex shell, and this is flex lip. The bright side is, side is that I wouldn't have finished this design with that mistake in there. By the time we started extruding it, it would have been obvious that I missed something. Times two. All right, cool. So now that's in the corner. Let's quick, quick consider, quick consider. Um, this right here. Uh, we're going to have this dead space here and here. So we may not want to have this looking like this, unless we want to do something with this dead space right here. Uh, what is that dead space? Here it is. Whoops. Control Z. Control Y. This to this. Seven millimeters on each side. So more than half an inch total. Ah, uh, you know what? That's not that bad. That's probably not that bad. Okay. I am just considering at this point what else we would need to do. The next question is. Yeah, actually, 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 uh, blah, 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 blah. there's that, there's that, there's that. So. Um, these flex things, let me really quick, go back to the camera really quick, because really quick, really, really quick to explain where I'm going with this. And this guy is, come on, come back on. There we go. Um, the Dremels, uh, stems here. These work because we push this all the way through. So if I took this guy and put this through. Again, we're talking about five millimeters. All right, that guy's not going to fit because he is bigger. But my point is that some amount of him should probably stick through the other side. Um, maybe. So basically, there's two problems. One, the larger side is the size that he wants to go through. 
which means that these inserts have to come from the inside of the box. So let's draw that really quick. The uh, cross section of the box right here. This is how it's going to have to work. Uh, cross section. We're going to need a little bit of offset from the bottom of the cone for this thing to come through. Then the cone. And then the lip up here. So the lip has to come in from the inside as opposed to from the outside. These are kind of from the outside, right? But it's going to be coming in from the inside. We're going to need clearance on the inside of the box because I don't really want the collet coming out the bottom like this. And then chances are the fat part of the collet is going to be the part that's sticking out the top here. Um, it may recess in a little bit. Actually, I can tell you whether or not it does if I just take a measurement because, again, the fatter part is two millimeters bigger than the smaller part. So the fatter part is going to be 6.2 and the fat part of the collet is six. So it only sits in there just a little bit, but it will sit in there a little bit. Otherwise, this is more or less correct. Again, mostly what we need to do is we need to make sure that the bottom part, the bottom of the collet, is above the floor. So what that means is the way this is going to end up looking is a cutout like this. And then these collets get put into that. Now, my biggest problem at the moment is I'm not sure how that's going to print. I think that's going to print fine. Yeah, that should print fine. I think I'm overthinking that part. Yeah, I'm probably overthinking the printability part. Okay, cool. Cool, 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 cool. Um, but, 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 but. That means, what that means is let me toss this in here uh, I do not want that vertically though I want that perpendicular at best so this is actually going to need to be extruded out and this is what that cone rides against actually I guess we can just extrude around the cone yeah that's fine all right never mind yeah, we can just extrude around the cone. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. I think we have everything we need now, all the information we need. Oh, I didn't send you guys back to Fujione. So, um, what you didn't see me blabbing about is I went and put a box in here and made it uh, tangent to the center cone. And I was going to cut that out to fit in there, but that's entirely unnecessary, I realized. So, we won't be doing that. Okay, 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 okay. So, let us extrude all this from object that. And this is just the floor. And yeah, we can join that because I want this all to be one piece. Turn that sketch off, turn that back on. Now, this from object there. So this is going to be the what the what you call it plugs into. What that insert cone plugs into. We should be fine here. I'm pretty sure we're fine here. This is what I was blabbing to myself about being concerned about. Now again. It just needs to be up until the fat part, a little bit more than the fat part of the collet. Honestly, I'm probably just going to go ahead and make it the full length of the collet because the collet head is about seven millimeters. And I think that's less than the overall height of this guy over here. So, so long as that's the case, we should be fine. So the overall, overall collet height here. 
is 19.2, call it 19.5. Actually, I wanted to go a little bit more, so let's call it 20. Uh, 20. Okay, so I was wrong about that one. Remember how I just said that I think that's we're going to have enough height for the... Um, call it head. That does not look like 7 millimeters to me. Nope, it's 2.5. So... So, 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 um, two ways of solving this problem. Actually, no, there is no two ways of solving this problem. We're just going to have to make it bigger. That's all it really is. comes down to. Oh, no, derp. That's right. That was the overall height. So I can still subtract the seven off of that. And we should be fine. And I just dropped one of the columns. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. It's fine. It's fine. All right, so uh, let's call it 21 then, minus 7. All right, cool. Now we can check here. And that's 8 and a quarter, or 8 and a half, rather. So yeah, the collet will come up to right about here. And that's the tallest collet I have. Again, I have other ones that are shorter. So no problem. All right, now... Um, I think I will square this guy out first and then do the inserts and square out the inserts. I could do both at the same time. Um, I mean, maybe I couldn't. Maybe I couldn't. But square size. Uh, we should do spacing, please, though. Square size. Whoops. Square Square size, two and four, and that is good. Now we just need to make the collet inserts. Uh, new component, collet flex inserts, and we can do one as its own component and extrude the rest, or square out the rest of them as components. All right, there we go. So, um, ba -ba 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 -ba. we will need to come up here and create a new sketch. And we'll have to do the same with the bottom because we're lofting. Because we're lofting, we can't use this sketch that we've already made. In which case, all of that honestly could be, all the inner rings could be, which call it? Construction lines. Oh, I am not projecting. I was looking to project. That guy, and that guy, and that guy for the top one. So this is the top one. So those are... Actually, no, that is what we need. Okay. Uh, then, finish sketch. Let's get the loft done first. I feel more comfortable with that um <laughs> um we had 20 minus 7 for 13 right it occurs to me that my bottom of my cone is not going to be all the way to the bottom of that hole it shouldn't be okay so let's make our cone 11 millimeters from the top Minus 11. All right, cool. And now we can do this. Project out. Let's turn the other sketch off because we want to make sure we're grabbing the right stuff. All right, so that one. And now we need to add our flex wall on this guy. All right. Uh, next up, the slit in the middle. Do I want to put that on this sketch or not? I can. I can put it on this sketch, so I think I will. So, let's draw. Uh, try not to get the random horizontal line. So, 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 so. 
Um, bo -bo 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 -bo. I think I want this to be like two, maybe. And we will line this up with the circle. Centered there. And then tangent to the outside. Okay, cool. So, now for our lofts. Turn the body off so we can see what we're doing. We will loft from the top first because when you're lofting, you can only multiple select the first loft as far as I'm aware. If I'm wrong about that, well, I don't really know what to tell you. <laughs> I'm just wrong. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Yeah, that's right. That is, in fact, how lofts work. So now we need to do the cut loft. We do need two lofts. Correct. Turn the body back on. That is now a cut. Go away. Thank you. And now we can do this cut. Uh, actually, no. I should do this shell first. Yep. And minus four. It's one of those things. It can be any amount because... I mean, heck, it could be three. All it is is sitting in there centering it on the insert. So it just needs to be enough, right? Actually, yeah, I don't need to cut the shell too. So I can cut before I do this like I thought I could. So, boom, boom, boom. Distance all. Okay. And now come back and join. Uh, that should be a join. Okay. Turn these sketches off really quick. It doesn't look like it joined correctly. Let's see what the bodies look like. Oh no, it is one body. Just doesn't look like it. Just has some weird artifacting right there. So, now we can go ahead and do this part. Um, 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 um. um. For these guys. Okay, I did cut out on the lip right here. Okay, fair enough. Uh, let's see. But there's no reason to cut that out, right? I don't see any reason to cut that out. Just that little cut out right there. All right, otherwise, this does not need to be super thick. It's just bottoming out, so we can do that join. Attempt to join, at any rate. And because I have the cut in there, mysticable profiles, that guy, that guy, that guy. All right, there we go. And now we square pattern this guy out, right? Oh, actually, first I want to to make sure that this fits with the other guys. We're going to go minus 0.5, I guess. Eh, it doesn't need to be 0 0.5. 0 0.25. Alright, cool. I just don't want these guys butting into each other. So, back up to here. Uh, square pattern. Components. Do, 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 do. That guy. Select my axes. Grab the case body again. That guy. And that guy and then square this uh, make sure that we have spacing we do have spacing cool nice square square two and four okay all right all right all right all right all right now the next thing what I should have done back here I realized is before we do our square pattern here, 
I should set a little bit of an offset for that guy. Uh, phew, 0.05 is what I meant to say. All right, and when we do our square pattern, we need to include that feature. Okay, let's double check our diameters here. Just make sure that I covered over. Diameter 13.1 makes sense. That should be correct. It is. All right, cool. All right, back down to the end. So that is in there. Turn that sketch off. All right, and let me just double check this. Inspect to the top here is 16 and if i go instead to this top here that's 22 and we said that we needed 20 so we are good all right cool now no 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 i need to include the wrench inside of this case uh a because i need my wrench to do the or to insert these guys to attach these to the dremel and B, because I'm using him to get the back three guys out of there. So, how do I want to do that? So, the funny thing is that the fact of the matter is that with him being 1.2 millimeters, right? Do I remember that correctly? 1.5 millimeters? I do not remember that correctly. Uh, we actually probably have space above the collets to put them. He probably can sit loose inside of this case. And that would save me some effort. Some non-zero amount of effort. Do we want to wimp out and do that? I mean, it feels wrong to me, <laughs> frankly. Frankly, it feels wrong to me, but... Uh, you know what? Um, so with this case, we're going to need to put a lid on it, as I mentioned before. The lid... I'm thinking, so where I'm going with this is I think it can go into the lid. Let me come back to, let me fix this stupid light first before I turn the camera back on. All right, back to the camera. So, um, where is my, all right. So this is the one that didn't work out, but, um, I had this sliding lid. It's a dovetail lid, all right? And in theory, I could leave the center part, if you imagine this simply much smaller, leave the center part of this open and recessed, and then have a wrench shape in here, and then I can grab through here to get the wrench out and pull the wrench out. In theory, in theory that works. Uh, that does mean that I need to commit to this style of lid. So the question is, do I like this style of lid? Um, do, 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 do. Or do I want a more secure lid? The fact of the matter is, is that all this stuff is going to be tight into the case. So I could go with a loose lid like this. So let me grab the actual one. One second. Uh, where are you at? There you are. So. All right. So, uh, this is the actual one. As you can see, this is super loose. And I did that because I didn't want to bother with it. Well, there's two things. One, I figured this probably isn't going places. You know, I'm probably not carrying this thing around too much. It does have, uh, if you notice there, a little bit of a nipple in there to stop it from sliding, but it's not doing a terribly good job, frankly speaking. So one of those things, I could try that again 
try to uh, re-implement that feature. Um, I mean, we can go with this. The only other thing is... Eh, bum, 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 bum. So I'm just thinking about the kind of walls that we need to put on this. So let's head back to Fujione. So I would kind of like to do a lid that goes over top of this only because if I need to replace these uh, spring holders, uh, these flex holders, if I need to replace them, the only way I'm going to do that really, practically speaking, I mean, maybe I could try getting some kind of wrench in here and prying it out from the inside, from the middle. But the more realistic way is to shove a screwdriver in through the side here and pop it out, leverage it out. That's the more realistic way of getting these guys out of here. Um, in which case, again, a lid that goes around the outside makes more sense. And the only question at that point is, what exactly does that look like? And I guess we could do a sliding dovetail around the outside, slide on. Just again, the question of how does it stay in place? The other thing is, is that I'm going to need to put walls probably on these sides to enclose it. So if I do a lid, so let's go ahead and make a lid really quick. Lid component. All right. So if I do the lid here. And that's not what I wanted. I'm trying to get this plane. All right, there's that plane there. Please, thank you. All right, cool. So if I do the lid around the outside like this, right? Then as you can see, if the end of the lid is open to go around there, that's the whole entire point. Then I have this open window right here. So I'm probably going to have to add a wall going up the side here to close this part off this part is already going to be closed because this is the highest part right here but to close these ends off here i'd have to do that um again the question is how much of a uh how rather uh what's the word i'm looking for how secure of a lid do i want we also have the option obviously of doing a hinged lid so tossing a hinge here and then tossing a lid like this. Again, the ends will need to be closed up. Um, I should say, sorry, only the ends because we can still put this lip here on this lid. On this lid. I guess, you know what? I, uh, I wasn't sure how the ge geometry would work here because obviously this is my geometry circle, so if I put this right here to cover this up on the lid, put that on the circle, that swings up. So long as the hinge is there, then it wouldn't make contact if the hinge is up a little bit. Actually, no, then it would be swinging out, right? So we may be safe. So I put this up here. Then this would go out first. And then it would come back down and in on the close. So we could do that. And then the only question is, how do we lock it in place? And maybe that's where the wrench comes in. Maybe we use the wrench to uh, as a lock. It's an interesting idea. I kind of like this idea. Huh. All right. Uh, let's delete all this and actually make it. I actually kind of like this idea. Um, I guess I'm projecting this guy, this guy, and this guy. I guess. I guess that's what I'm doing. We can make those construction lines. We're not going to use them, or we don't have to use them at any rate. Let's close all this up for the time being. So if I put the hinge above and we'll use three millimeter bolts, 
Uh, let's go ahead and bring those in here really quick. Fasteners. Actually, shoot. I should have saved this in miscellaneous before I did that. Now I'm going to have to go back. Fasteners. Man, fusion is slow today. All right. Um, button head or socket head? I guess button head. We'll use a button head. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. Let's come back to the beginning. Oh, I do need to save it. Shoot. All right, whatever. We are scrolling the location now. Miscellaneous. Uh, I need to save it before inserting is the problem here. And this is Dremel. Um, so I've got my collets. I have my keyed flex shaft driver. And I have the keyless chuck. So what the heck do I call these? Um, interface case, I guess. I don't know what the proper word for this is. For this category of items. Oh, um, well, see, yeah. So they're tool holders. What they are, are tool holders. But the flex shaft isn't really a tool holder. Which is what was throwing me off. Because I was like, nah, the flex shaft doesn't hold any tools. I mean, the flex shaft, it does. It, you know, itself does. But not the flex shaft uh, driver. Maybe I just overthought that. Maybe this should have been two tool holder case. Anyway, let's get this inserted. Proceed. Okay. Uh, you, I actually wanted at the beginning. Now let's come back into lid. And we can hide you. And this is bolt size, M3 bolt size. And then we need the head. M3 head diameter and do, 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 I should probably have this like that and bu, 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 bum. this is going to let's see I'm gonna want a three millimeter actually no I want the three millimeter out here around the bolt head so at that point that can overlap with this because i have three millimeter wall minimum over here okay cool so we can tangent that like that okay now um that's the hinge well technically this is the hinge right here we can draw our three millimeters between here. No, we can't. No, we can't. Um. Okay. 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 Where's my other tangent? I should have two tangents here. Guess I gotta do this. Do 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 do. That goes out like that. That's gonna look a little ugly, but what are my alternatives? You know what? Um, I would. So the reason I'm doing this is because I was going to countersink the button head, but maybe I don't. Maybe I have that sticking out the edge, in which case I can do my three millimeters here. Okay. Um, so this needs to not run into that. But. Actually, it can. Actually, it can. 
So this guy is tangent with that. That's fine. I think we're all right with this. Let's see what happens. All right. So. That is parallel. That is now collinear. This is now collinear. Throw all this guy in here. That was not correct. Parallel. Actually, collinear. Um, bum, 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 bum. so this technically can stop right here because it just needs to cover. It doesn't necessarily need to go on the outside. The only question is how we do the locking mechanism. I guess I can add that in afterwards. So let's square this off. Uh, this is going to be tangent to that. And then quinkadink. All right. So this case is going to be the full length from object here distance to object here the hinge is probably going to be two hinges and hinge from each side and we can make that let's say 10 millimeters and then mirror that. Uh, that plane is what I wanted. <laughs> that was not correct. Okay. Identical? Okay. Um, This can print like that just fine. Okay, okay, okay. Okay. I'm just double checking for problems really quick. Um, bu -bu 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 I'm pretty sure this is still fine. It's still going to open okay. So let's get back to here. Grab that sketch. Um, bu -bu 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 -bu. I should be using... Since I'm using bold, I should be using a captured nut. I don't particularly want to use a lock nut. Rather, I'll use a capture nut and I can use some thread lock if I'm feeling uncomfortable. Actually, a lock nut wouldn't even work. No, it would. It would. Yeah, yeah, it would. It'd work reasonably well at any rate. Okay, okay, okay. So we need to come back in here. Control Z, come back in here. Uh, we need a 3mm nut. Um, finish. Come up here really quick. Come back here. Let's get a 3mm nut. M3 nut. Insert. Proceed. Okay. Back to the end. Back into the sketch. Grab the hex. Make this parallel to... Actually, which one do we want it to be parallel to? It makes a slight difference. 
I guess parallel to that. I guess. Nah, nah, I don't know. I'll think about it later. All right, anyway. This is going to be width here. And then this three millimeters is actually going to be off of this guy. That hurts. That got a lot bigger. Um, 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 um. So this tangent should now be that one. That one should now be this one. Okay. Yeah, everything else should be safe. We should be safe so far. Okay, back to this guy. Let's get these hinges in here. And you need... Actually, I guess I should do a little backstop for it, just in case. Uh, you know what? There's a quicker way of doing this. All right, so. From object, that is offset, not object. Uh, bu -bu 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 -bu. I should have drawn in a, what you call it here. This one is fine. Hold on, let me take a quick look at this on the right hand side and go up like this. Okay, yeah, I don't think that's going to overlap with that first square, so I think we're fine. Again, we should have that three millimeters, that's why I lined that three millimeter wall up. Uh, distance, 10. Join. Okay, now let's come back to this sketch really quick and draw this guy back in, oops. Or not back in, but, well, come on, Fusion. In period. Make that solid. And then make that 60. And tangent. Okay. And now for this one, grab that too. Okay, 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 okay. And we mirror it just like the other one. Mirror features that guy. Select. Oh, shoot, that's right. Um, before we do that, uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess I'll just come from this side. Okay. So grab our hex really quick. from object minus thickness okay and then toss our offsets in before we mirror it stuff is about to get in the way let's turn the lid off really quick there we go and that so minus 0 0.05 and now we can mirror it Mirror features one, two, three across the center plane. Where's my origin at? Oh, there it is. Ah, shoot me. And we'll see whether or not we need to identical that guy like the other one. We do. Identical. Okay. 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 Now let us come back up here. Lid. Toss a joint in for observational purposes. Joint, revolve, that guy to that guy. And um, I kind of want the inside of this right here. So let's see if we can grab that. There we go. Okay, cool. 
And after I'm done this, I'm going to go ahead and throw print offsets in for that guy. I wanted to double check this guy because even though I think it's alright, let me close the side here so I have more screen real estate. Yeah, I don't see it. Back to because the hinge is above that corner, or the center point of that hinge is above that corner, it should be fine. There's no reason why it shouldn't be. Alright, cool. Alright, alright, alright. Now, back into here, let's get our print offsets to make sure that we're not bumping into stuff. And actually, I'll do a little bit more because it can be loose. So, minus 0.2. Okay. And let's do minus 0.1 for the rest of this stuff. All right, cool. So this guy's printing upside down. That's fine right now. There's nothing wrong with that. The other guy is printing face up. And that's why we put these overhang supports here. So really quick, I'm going to go ahead and square out the bottom case. And then we got to figure out back to the wrench and locking how we're going to end up doing that. All right. One thing at a time, we'll square out the case. Project this guy and that guy. Okay. Actually, you know what? I guess I didn't need the other guy. I can just do it from the bottom because the top is lined up with the bottom. So don't necessarily need to project both of them. That... Turn those guys off for the moment. Toss a square in. A knot with the horizontal though, please. Alright, cool. And I guess I will turn these guys back on because these are the guys we're actually extruding right now. From object, face, distance to object, face, and join. Okay, now again, the uh, where we're keeping the wrench and how we're keeping this closed. Uh, we can turn those guys back on. I am tempted to do something. So the one tricky thing is that I need to be able to get the wrench back out by itself. That is the only tricky thing here. Uh, like without using a tool is what I mean. Um, I think what I can do So I kind of actually at this point wish that, ah, no, nah, it wouldn't work though. I kind of wish these guys were at the back and that was at the front, but it wouldn't work. So, um, bu -bu 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 oh yeah, see, that's actually, um, 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 um. All right, let's come back before this. So let's save these for a hot second. Okay, and then before these offsets, the easiest thing is just to do a combine here. Combine that and that, keep tools, okay. And I turn this off and I just confirm that that's the only thing that got cut. Yes, okay. And then I'm actually also going to need, because we didn't do an offset clearance on that part of the hinge we're going to need those guys minus 0.2 okay quick glance make sure nothing looks wrong it doesn't so back to the problem at hand 
So, what I'm thinking, and the reason why I kind of wished that um, this was back here, is because I'm thinking, let's come here, and I am going to do this on the global, because it's going to affect both objects. Let me see if this fits. So, the top of the wrench is... 21.2 so let's draw that in 21 21.2 okay it's not gonna fit anyway okay never mind uh, I was thinking about putting this sliding the wrench in this way on this side so that it keeps this lid locked down which is why I kind of wanted it over here, because if I could put it over here and have it like this, so if I had it like this over here, I mean, I kind of can, can't I? Uh, the only problem, the reason why I didn't really think that was feasible is because I need extra thickness on here. And the idea is that I just countersink it uh, into this wall, into both of these walls with a little lip around it to keep it, uh, you know, in place. And then a slit that I can just slide it up, you know, just reach in between and slide it up. Um, you know what? Let's just, so we're on the same page. Uh, this is what I was talking about here. So here is the rough shape of my box. Do, 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 do. And then the same thing on the bottom mirror pieces so if the wrench could fit right here then this hinge can't go like this because that would be pulling the bottom part of this wrench this way and therefore it'd be locked in place meanwhile i would have a cutout like this where you could actually see the wrench and then i could just push up this slit to pop the wrench out so the wrench would be open here and here you know tangent to this guy but I'd have a little cover right here so it's not falling out so that's the idea I was going for but it doesn't look like I have enough space is the problem to fit it so back to fusion that would have been a nice idea. I would have liked that idea. But, like I said, as you can see, wrench is not fitting in there. I mean, the wrench is not a perfect circle, to be fair. So, the head of the wrench is 16 and the overall length. And I don't want the wrench sticking out the top and the bottom. Top or the bottom is 57. So, quick check on that one. Fifty-seven. So there you go. The overall size of the wrench is definitely too big for that. Now, the next option is doing it through the top. So what we can do, I think. So we can't go up and down. So our only options are this way or this way. But this direction doesn't seem like it works to me so it'd be going this way I could be wrong about that it may work going this way but I don't think so um, if I take the lid off really quick so what I'm thinking is maybe extruding up locking bits right here or at least a locking bit up through the lid still attached to this guy to the base and then sliding the wrench through that um i could also redesign the top and do it in the middle which makes a bit more sense it does make a bit more sense so if we come all the way back here instead of centering all this delete that 
Make this. Okay, evidently don't make this. Uh, get rid of these guys. There we go. Square, square size times four. And then, yeah, maybe doing three here and leaving that space open. At this point, I don't need to add that extra extrusion in, which is nice. It's a nice bonus. Um, why not? What's stopping me from going? Oh, no, I can go left and right. So why can't I center on? Oh, that's the wrong thing. Okay. Uh, whoopsies. I was trying to center on the sketch origin. Was what was going on there. Um, What over here is loose? I actually don't know. Um, boom, 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 boom. Because that's centered on that line. That's centered on that. So vertically, this is all centered. It's three millimeter, ugh, three millimeters from that edge. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah. So I don't know why that is not constrained. Um, I guess we can check really quick. Sketch dot show show under constrained. Yeah, nine points and nine cur why nine curves? It's only one curve, it's a circle. I only have one curve there. Um but nine points. You're connected, you're connected, so it's not that. Yeah. Alright, you know what? We're done fiddling with it. Finish. Uh, turn the lid off. Yeah, okay, so that did get foobard. So, this guy right here, right? Delete that. Turn the lid off really quick. All right, there we go, cool. Uh, the origin can go back off. So... What is this? Why are you? Okay, it looked like there was a gap in there. Evidently, there's not. So, we are safe. I thought there was a gap between this hinge and the side of the box. But, that does not appear to be the case. So... Let us let us see. Um, actually, I guess this doesn't work. Shoot. Yeah, that idea doesn't look like it works. Um, because if I draw it really quick, let's turn this way. So 22 millimeters is like that. And if we compare that to this, then it doesn't, uh, you know what? Maybe it will still work, actually. It might just barely work. So eight millimeters on center is the shank of it. Let's project this. 
make all that except for that guy I do want to keep that guy turn the case back off I want you to be perpendicular to that this can now be centered on that this is eight millimeters the overall height I mean that gets a little bit funky but because again the top part of this is not a perfect circle this is a ellipse actually if it's an ellipse I should probably just make it an ellipse so 15 tall ellipse let's delete that ellipse ellipse all right so this is 22 and this is 15 and the overall height is 57 57 all right so that does fit inside the box and let me see the lid I should probably project that as well we'll make that okay so this uh, we draw an offset here uh, I'm just gonna go two millimeters instead of three on that offset and then uh, where's the lid which one's the lid that one's the lid that's the lid hinge but it doesn't come back down oh okay it's this one up here okay okay okay, okay. um I can't really use that though hmm <laughs> all right let's turn it off really quick so that there that's still on the inside there so this guy right here okay I can't tangent to that because that's an offset so let's actually delete that offset then and make another ellipse so I can actually use it Delete that. That collinear with that. That is that plus two. Actually, that plus four. There we go. And that is that plus four. And then we just need to, we are already collinear, so we just need to center it center on that all right cool 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 and now we can use this this is like that and we can quinky dink that corner with that okay now that means that and if we actually uh, do the same thing up here just align it with that is more or less correct so <laughs> that works however I probably shouldn't use this quink it ink here not on I'm looking at it so let's get rid of it because actually that may not be that bad I take it back we actually probably can use that one all right so look at turn sideways that's our key right there our wrench what I want to do is draw these in because it needs to slide this direction to get out so this will be hollow all here 
Uh, then, 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 then. Let's see. Okay, I know how I'm going to do this. Okay, okay, okay. So, from the lid. From object there. Minus, let's say, two. Cut. And then... Oh, see, it did pop out. Okay, I didn't think we were going to pop out there. That's why I was saying we may not be able to do that. Um... Uh, the other problem is printability because this is going to be printing upside down. Oh, but we can come from the bottom. We can come from the bottom instead. So from here and plus two now. Let's see what happens here. Okay, that's not, I mean, that's a little bad. Okay, yeah. So back to here. Turn that quinky dink back off. And we're going to have to quinky dink with this guy right here. Does this still work? It looks like it still works. So this is our line right here that we need to keep on this side of. Huh. Did I lose internet or? Internet. Looks like I still have internet. Okay. Gotcha. I wonder why I got that alert. Okay. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, what I was saying is that's the line we have to stay away from in order to put the locking mechanism in here. So, what I was going to do... Um... <laughs> you know what okay so yeah 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 we're fine we're fine we're fine okay so uh what i was trying to avoid yeah we still clipped here that's annoying uh we should have enough space let me just map it out uh, I was going to, uh, you see how I have this right here, keeping the key up? I was going to, ah, shoot, 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 shoot. Um, it doesn't work. Okay, okay, okay. Control Z, 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 Control Z. Okay. Um, what's happening here? is I wanted to put that lip that I was talking about to keep the key down. It occurs to me, though, as I was thinking about this and panicking, that the keying function that's going to be attached to the base that this is going to slide through will actually keep it in place. So that's not necessary, is what I, the conclusion I came to. So what I was going to do is I was going to do this, and then I was going to offset like this let's say one millimeter and then i was going to re-extrude this from here minus uh another two millimeters and you can see how well let's fix this really quick you can see how that creates a lip. So that's what I was going to do. Uh, the problem is, is that this is printing upside down. And that's an overhang right there. So that's not great. You know what? Maybe it's not as bad as I thought it was, though. You know what? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only place I was going with this is that we don't actually need to go down these two levels because the base will hold the key down. Yeah, alright. Anyway, we don't need to go down these two levels. 
End of story. So, uh, minus five. There we go. And I need to move that sketch back out. And now we can just put supports in here. Point being is that if we add supports in here, it's not a problem because they can be taken out. But let's get you moved back again. And you go here, finish. Um, actually, I don't know if that, wait, where is my, oh, my front line's right there. Okay, so that is too far. Control Z, Control Z. Let's try this guy. Finish. I'm trying not to eat into this hinge is my problem. Especially because this then needs to cut both bodies. Uh, Hold on, let me... Case end lid, right? So if I take the lid off right now, you can see how it gives me this ugly little cut right there. That's what I was trying to avoid. The problem is though, is that at its previous placement, turn the lid off. So right here we are, we were just at here, right? So I guess maybe try an offset 1.5 because what we need, and I'll draw it in now because we should have it in this drawing, or I want to have it adding rate in this drawing, is this guy. So this will be there. Uh, let's set it back one. And then it can be any sort of width we want. Actually, I guess I'll just set it relative to this guy. Give him like three millimeter space. And anyway, so this is a 1.5 wall, which is not great. It's not great. If I move this another 1.5 that way, we'd be again lined up in there and we already saw it didn't really work, but that would give me my three millimeters wall I want here. Maybe I just go one and we'll see how that looks. All right, let's see how this cutout looks. Lid case. Okay, we didn't break through. Ah, uh, we did just barely. Ah, bar, 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 bar. Oh, but it was not enough, was it? It doesn't look like it was enough to hit that hinge. All right, we should be safe. Okay, okay, okay. Cool. So, now we can come down to case. Turn the lid off really quick. Grab that sketch again. Grab that. From object here, distance to object, here, and join, but, but, I actually should, ah, no, I shouldn't, never mind. Um, so anyway, combine that with that, whoops, actually the other way, combine that with that. And we should just have that one cut out there. We can turn the case off and open that up a little bit. And this is going to be like a point two. And this actually gets a little bit ugly just because shoot. Um, this hinge, 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we can compensate for that. We can fix that. Um, let's get this done first. So, what we want to do is come back to case now. Grab that sketch. Grab this part. Turn the case back on. And from object here, whoops, not there. I want the lid. I swear, I keep on seeing it pop up just briefly. There we go. So from there, two millimeters. Cut, okay. That should be the only body getting cut. All right, cool. All right, so as you can see, the wrench slides in there as previously discussed. Uh, did we already put our offsets on the lid? There's that one, but not the other one. <laughs> I don't think it's going to break anything. What? How did I get five? All right, minus 0.2, because it can be a little bit loose in there. Doesn't look like it broke anything. And actually, the case also wants So I have two millimeters. Again, it's 1.5 for the wrench. I have two millimeters going up and down, but this should also have an offset there to make sure I can get through. All right, and then, bu -bu 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 -bu. actually, you know what we can do? Um, I don't know how well this is gonna work. So right now, I can put my thumb in here. The point is, is that I can put my thumb in here, in this gap right here, and drag the, what you call it out, the wrench out. And that's fine. The only thing is, is that the wrench can slide on out on its own right now. I was thinking about, if I come back here to this sketch somewhere, I was thinking about putting a little stop block right here, in the middle right here, and just having this be like, I mean, it, it doesn't matter what it is like this, but just having this be like a millimeter like that just so it doesn't want to slide on its own it looks good to me my only problem is that I then might have problems getting the wrench out because I can't slide it straight out I have to actually pick it up and I can't get my fingers in there to pick it up. That's my problem. So I like that idea, but I don't think it's reasonable. We do activate. Sketch. All right, uh, let me get some colors in here really quick. We still need to fix the fact that this part is now going to get destroyed by the hinge. But like I said, I think that's an easy fix. So we've used most of these colors so far today. We'll use bright, vibrant colors now. Neon green lid. Do, do, do. There we go. Okay. Uh, so the easy, I'm pretty sure the easy fix here is come on the side here, project out this guy, 
Uh, let's turn some bodies off really quick. Project out that as my center point. Grab this as a circle. Project out that side of the case. Make that quink and ink on that corner. Or maybe it's this corner. So this corner is closer than that corner, so this should still be fine. And then bodies intersect the body, I guess. I think that's fine. Let's see what that looks like. Whoops. Oh, uh, no. Look at. I somehow got turned around there. Uh, look at. Look at. There we go. I'm backwards now. All right. Cool. Um. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So I want to. This is going to go up like this which means that this corner is going to go around like that. Right? Hold on, let me take a quick look at it. This makes sense in some part of my mind, but now that I'm talking about it, it's not. So where's my joint at? Uh, let me turn the sketch off really quick. Where's my joint? There it is. Actually, let's leave this here really quick. Uh, just to make sure, because this should be clipping right here. Okay, yes, it is clipping. It's clipping at the front and the back, which kind of made sense to me. And it is the front corner, or the top corner that's clipping right now. Actually, let's check it there as well. I'm pretty sure I'm thinking about this correctly. It's just late, and therefore... I'm double guessing myself. Yeah, it's the top corner. And one last check on the other end. So like here. Yeah, and the top corner is still the one. Yeah, yeah. So that is what I expected. Although, although I need to make sure they include the bottom corner there. So yeah, I am thinking about this correctly. I just need to also define this bottom corner. Okay. And then this can all be solid. And then I just need to extrude that body lid from object that distance to object that whoops that is not the correct to object there we go uh fusion why are you doing this to me Actually, now that I'm thinking about this, I actually do think I remember this running into this problem after one of the updates. So I do think this is a newer problem. All right, there we go. So I can get around it by reversing my order that I'm selecting these things in. Okay, and then I will just, for my sanity's sake, toss in some offsets to make sure that we're not clipping. All right, so let's come back up here and do that one more time just to be sure. So five minus five. Capture, calculate. Oh no, we are still clipping. What are we clipping on? Where is this? show is that 
corner. It might be that corner right there. That's funny. Didn't I? Did I not extrude the right thing? Uh, turn these guys off so I can see what I'm looking at. Oh, this should have been tangent. That's what it should have been. I think that's the thing. Either that or I'm crazy. It's one of those things. Like I said, it is late. So. Wait. Time out. Time out. Time out. Put that hinge back. Delete that guy. Tangent to that guy. Okay. Now I think we're safe. I think. I hope. I sure hope. Okay. Um, back to what we're doing. So five minus five. Interference, capture, boink boink, capture, no interferences, excellent. Control Z, minus 10. Interferences, capture, boink boink, calculate, no interferences, control Z. Minus 20, inspect. Interference, capture, boink, boink, calculate, no interferences. All right, cool. Nice. All right, all right, all right. There we are. All right, I am quite happy with that. Good. Um, actually, I should because, let me double check really quick. Turn the lid off. Um, blah, blah, blah. That's a little concerning right there. I didn't notice it before, but uh, are these offsets? Okay, no, that's that offset there. So I should add just a print offset for these guys, which again is a little bit scary just because that one edge is quite close. You know what, I wonder how much I would screw things up if I came back in here and made this four instead at this point. <laughs> uh, it doesn't like that. What if I delete? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, because this is centered. Maybe. Something is centered. Oh, these guys are all centered. That's what it is. I think. Yeah. Yeah, that would be it. That would be it. Because all these guys are vertically centered. Um, ba -ba 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 -boom. Do I want to fix that? Kind of do. Uh, what did I just delete? I deleted the wrong thing. That's all I know. Okay. Grab you. Grab your center point. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Actually, let's do that. Delete, delete, delete. Let's delete these guys. Or actually, I can keep those guys. No, I can't. Yes, I can. Let's think about this really quick. Can I? Can I, can I, can I, can I? If I delete that guy. Four.
do that. Yeah, that guy is still... Yes, okay, cool. Perpendicular, actually, let's make you parallel to the outside box. That makes more sense. Whoops, that was the wrong one. Okay. There's that. This guy... Actually, hold on, wait a second. No, that's all good. Yeah, 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 that's all good. All right. And now let's see what breaks. Everything is looking good so far. I don't see anything broken on that. Let's look at the lid. I think we might be all right. So if I keep on going, my only point being is I'm trying to get rid of that hole in the lid. Is this helping? I, For some reason, it doesn't feel like it's helping. Um, ba 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 ba. I'm gonna go ahead and set that back. Whoops, actually just all the way back. There we go. And the next undo is the offset faces. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm gonna leave that alone. I have decided I'm leaving that alone. I don't actually wanna screw it up at this point, so. That is that. All right, awesome. So, ugh. We got through those three minor projects. The fact of the matter is that each of those could have been an hour stream. Uh, this one was actually more like two hours, coming up on two hours. So, um, yeah, this could have been its own stream. <laughs> it would have been nice. Uh, but we got those banged out. And in the meantime, so the one major project that I was working on, if you guys have been following, I still haven't mentioned what it is. All I have to say is that the project, at no fault of the projector, but the project ended up going way sideways, and I can't actually figure out what went wrong. What went wrong, rather? Um, I'm trying my best, but I would like to have that done by Wednesday of this week. I need to start working on a second project that... I was hoping to start working on yesterday, but because I've been trying to pro uh, troubleshoot the first major project, that hasn't been ha happening. So, uh, needless to say, hopefully by Wednesday, I have project number one done. And then by Saturday, I have project number two done, just because obviously Sunday is Christmas. Happy Christmas. Happy early Christmas to everybody, because I probably won't be streaming until... Uh, actually, I'll probably stream on Monday. Wait, Christmas is Sunday, right? I'm not getting that confused. When is Christmas? It is late, so I don't cross, trust myself. Christmas 2023. Oh, no, Christmas is Monday. Okay, so Tuesday. Christmas is Monday. So Tuesday, I will likely stream because I will not be going to work on Tuesday. We're closed. So, yeah, all right. Uh, again, hopefully, then in that case, well, yeah, I should still have it done before Sunday because Sunday is Christmas Eve. Project number two. We'll see what happens. Otherwise, uh, I will obviously need to edit together videos of those plus all the other videos that I have back cataloged at some point. So, Again, in theory, videos are coming. I'm just spending all my time doing projects instead of videos, which, frankly, makes me happier, but doesn't do very much for the channel. So, uh, 
Lights are now unplugged, so they're not blasting my eyes out anymore, and I am ready to go to bed. It is now after midnight for me, and I wanted to be in bed by 10, so <laughs> I'm crying. All right. Anyway, I got work at 530 tomorrow morning. I will see you guys later. I hope you have a great and wonderful day, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. Goodbye.